Hello and welcome to Namaste Today Live. I'm your host, Sensei Christopher Wateki, an astrologer, a lighthearted citizen of the world. I was going to say of the United States, of the world, and the creator of the step system. It's a pleasure to have you here. We are rocking and rolling on the sort of eve, I say eve as far as three days early, of a major solar eclipse. And we are streaming live, even though Mercury is retrograde, on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, X.com, and now on our professional Instagram channel. We also have our super chat going on here. If you are watching live on any of the channels, say hello and tell us what your name is and where you're coming from. We'll say hello to Sydney. So good to see you. Hope you're having a nice vacation. Michelle Bell, it wouldn't be an episode without you. Evil D, I haven't seen you in a while. Didn't know you're in Auburn, California. Christine, nice to see you. Stacy, Shiva, wow, Shiva's online. Evil D, see Carol. Cat Ryder, so nice to see you again. And we'll do one more. Lori Ship one of our great regulars scott is here hello scott v and hello jamie in port washington what a pleasure oh we have someone from egypt holy shift daryl blankenship my soul brother good to see you man it is so nice to see everybody here i'm feeling the energy y'all i don't know if you are feeling it it's an intense time i have a lot of stories about the eclipse coming up we had an earthquake today we'll talk about that as well <clears throat> but we have an amazing show we're going to dive deep on so many levels one we have a solar eclipse that's hitting us on Monday. It is probably the most powerful eclipse I've ever witnessed as an astrologer. We have Mars conjoining Saturn this Wednesday. That's pretty intense too, Mars and Saturn. That's not a light foot at all. And then a Kazemi inspiration, Mercury passing through the heart of the sun this Thursday at step 22, if you know your steps. And later tonight on Astro Mingo, we're going to talk about food healing, chemicals, cancer, and most of all, prevention. Dr. Christian Gonzalez, a naturopath medical doctor that specializes in oncology. He's here to talk about our unhealthy world, emotional healing, and much, much more. But first, let's take a look at the week's moods and your zodiac weather. Zodiac weather is from Saturday, April 6th to Friday, April 12th, 2024. Looking ahead at the weekend forecast, it's really preparation for the solar eclipse and committing to where you want to heal. Let's drill down. On Saturday, it's sunny and committed. Step 17 means that Saturn rules the day. This will be a bit of a serious day, but also an empowering day. The moon is in Pisces, so you may be feeling some old karma, particularly with other people. But you are committing now to what you seek to heal and being called to embrace self-love with Venus sextiling Pluto. On Sunday, it's sunny and brazen. Step 18 means Mars rules the day, making this a Grandmaster Day. This is a day where actions will speak louder than words. Be careful of reactions as well. It's time to take action and move ahead for your healing. You're opening up to some new convictions. And it's Love Fest Day. Tell everyone you love that you love them. The moon will shift from Pisces into Aries on countdown for the eclipse. Looking ahead to the week forecast for all five days and your mood casts it looks like over the course of the week you're going to have a major solar eclipse on monday and the rest of the week is pretty much recovery on monday it's sunny and vigilant step 19 means earth rules the day for this new moon solar eclipse called the champions return this total solar eclipse will cast a shadow across the united states the theme of the eclipse is i was made for this and the sun will directly conjoin Chiron and the moon for this galactic event. This event will be a powerful healing and may force certain issues in your consciousness up to the surface. Due to the power of this eclipse, we advise you use caution with heavy machinery or doing anything that may be considered risky behavior. On Tuesday, it's sunny and worthy. Step 20 means the moon rules the day. And this, of course, is the day after the new moon solar eclipse. So you're probably feeling emotional insecurities. You are processing eclipse aftermath and you are feeling out what the future will bring. The moon will shift from strong, fiery Aries into Taurus, which will start to ground you towards the end of the day. On Wednesday, hump day, it's sunny and expanding. Step 21 means it's time to start some fun. Jupiter rules this day, and so you'll now expand your options for the future and begin to articulate your plan. 
Plus, Mars can join Saturn, bringing a clear, crisp understanding of the attitude to take about your karma during the day. And the moon in Taurus will make you feel valuable and worthy. On Thursday, it's sunny and analytical. Step 22 means Uranus rules the day. This is a day for divine inspiration that will arrive. That's because we have a Mercury Kazemi, Mercury retrograde passing through the center of the sun. Expect incredible inspiration from your higher self. And you're reconsidering just where you do belong in the future. It might be a change now that the eclipse has happened. And the moon will shift from Taurus into Gemini. So things get rather pensive or chatty towards the end of the day. And then on Friday, it's sunny and shifting. Step 23 means Mercury retrograde rules the day. There's a triple dose of that Mercury energy with the moon in Gemini as well. On this day, you're finally getting clear about the future and incorporating all the aspects of the eclipse. And you're processing the many possibilities and probabilities of the future. It's serious joy, joy, joy. If you're watching on YouTube, please be kind and do subscribe to our YouTube channel, Serious Joy TV. Hit the bell button so you're notified. And if you don't mind, please like our program and this video so the YouTube algorithm will suggest us to other people who are astrology fanatics. <laughs> this particular episode of Namaste Today Live is sponsored by Unite the Light, the Lightworker Summit happening on May 18th and 19th, produced by SeriousJoy.com and also Devin Dewar. We are doing it at the Renaissance Austin in Austin, Texas. This is about inspiration, like-minded thinkers, bringing our networking together. It's two phenomenal days, one first day show and tell, a dinner enchanted gala and dinner that evening with entertainment and some fun surprises. And then Sunday, several panel discussions about light work, our industry, and how we come together. This is for anybody who really feels that they want to be and improve the world. They want to be an influencer. They want to be a light worker. They want to make the world a better place. Then this is your tribe. This is mostly about coming together under one roof for two days, starting to network, starting to collaborate. In fact, we have this new expression, collaboration is the new cash. That's what we believe. And we feel like in this upcoming year, the earth is going through so many challenges. We should hold hands and come together now before we have these challenges so that we're on the same team and we have each other's phone numbers. Go to unitethelight.love, unitethelight.love. I think we have three more VIP tickets left, but if you can't get VIP, don't sweat it. You can buy a normal uh, ticket and you can buy the dinner <clears throat> as an addendum if you want to. You just won't have front row seats. Part of VIP is that you get to be front row. That's okay. I'll be walking around the whole premises. It'll be a good time. Can't wait to see you. It's going to be a great time. Also, we do continue to just say and put out there that if you'd like to be a sponsor of the event, then email us at support at seriousjoy.com. This will be great exposure among today's most leading light workers. Um, just email us if you'd like to be a part of that, support at seriousjoy.com. All right, friends, we've got so much to talk about. Without further ado, let's move on to our weekly planets and transits. Well, it has been a rocky road so far, and I'm not talking about the ice cream. Energy has been intense this entire week. I have been feeling really the entire eclipse season. I thought the lunar eclipse a week, a week and a half ago was kind of intense, but the amount of energy and gravity that's coming in right now for this eclipse is pretty incredible. In fact, just to name a couple of things, we had an earthquake and we also had a follow-up earthquake on the East Coast. I have some clients, some VIP clients that were telling me and talking about that. There's also word that there is bombing going on now in Lebanon. I'll have to catch up with that after I get off the air. That's pretty powerful and intense. My prayers to anyone out there in that sector, any Lebanese person, my heart is with you. That's just not cool in this modern age that we're doing anything violent or militarist, militaristic, in my humble opinion. But to some degree, I'm not surprised that there is violence because of the power of this solar eclipse that we're about to have. Now, I have to say, I have never in my entire life seen a solar eclipse event that is this powerful astrologically. And as you may or may not know, the energy of an eclipse is basically the sun and moon coming together and the moon blocking the sun. 
So what ends up happening is you have the rays of the sun, which is our heart's desires, um, combining with all the emotions of the earth as one. So it's all of our heart and all of our emotions coming together in a perfect synastry, right? To where the energy is more powerful, the light bends around the moon, and what's really special about this particular eclipse is the fact that it's conjoining the asteroid comet Chiron, which is the planet of healing or the comet of healing. Now, it's likely the best way to look at this is as an energy. So Chiron is the energy of becoming. It is the ruler of Virgo, in my opinion. <clears throat> and what it calls for us to do is become hyper aware. Chiron energy really makes you aware of what is out of alignment. It's also a healing energy. It's a commandment for alignment. So you could say, because it rules Virgo, it is sort of the disinfectant of the solar system. It actually sort of kills the spiritual bacteria that keeps us up at night. It forces us to come into alignment. It calls for us to come back into our natural integrity. And from a spiritual perspective, integrity is basically loving yourself and loving your life. That's spiritual integrity. If you're in love with yourself, and you're loving the life that you live, you're in spiritual integrity. So you can imagine how many people on the earth are not loving themselves and not loving their life. And so if you're carrying, in my opinion, a lot of heavy dead weight, any sort of repressed anger, any sort of repressed sadness, any emotions that you haven't processed or really come to terms with, um, what this is gonna do is force it up to the surface. Now. I can attest to this myself. I'm not a Boy Scout, um, but I will say I do have Boy Scouts on her anyways, because <laughs> I now coach <laughs> former Boy Scouts. So, but my point is, is that uh, I had, I already went through my, my crash. I had a crash in the last 24 hours. It was an energetic crash. I, I felt heaviness. I had deep sadness come up. And one thing that was really interesting, and we'll show this in the chart is, yes, this is a Chiron eclipse, but there's the North node at 15 degrees Aries and the South node at 15 degrees Libra. And remember the nodes are actually the, the ecliptic of the sun and the orbit of the moon and where they cross. So uh, uh, a, a node represents a powerful intersection of gravitational energy or photon energy, whatever you feel is coming from the planets. There's a cross there. And that means that we are leaving old relationships and we're moving toward new relationships and finding the path of least resistance. And what I found was, which actually surprised me, is I had at least one karmic relationship that I connected to in the last few days where I really feel like there was some powerful healing uh, between us. So I, I actually feel that's a little caveat that I had not really considered until I lived it, that if you have karma in a relationship, if you have repressed emotion in a relationship, if you have something you haven't talked about, it may come to the surface out of this eclipse because it's it's energetically weighing on you. Now, I saw another uh, person talk, an Akashic Records person. I cannot remember her name for the life of me. I'm sorry. Maybe Noelle can text it to me and I'll, and I'll do it. She pointed out to me, but she was basically talking about how she felt that this eclipse is really um, bringing together all of our fragmented pieces of ourselves from past lives. And I have to say, I agree with that. I feel what's happening here in this eclipse is that this is the final uh, piece of healing that we've been working on for a long time. In fact, you know, just to tell the whole story, Neptune in Pisces entered into Pisces in 2012. That meant that we are now in the cycle of spiritual healing. What that meant was our subconscious portals and gateways were now energetically opened up. What that meant was we began to actually feel repressed subconscious emotions come to the surface. And as you know, most repressed emotions are actually echoes of past lives that we've lived. And so since 2012, we've had all these different past lives coming to our awareness. And maybe it even was, oh, it was Bonnie McCliss. Thank you, Noel. I watched a video with Bonnie McCliss. <laughs> Thanks. I knew she'd get the message. I love it when the staff is watching. Appreciate it. But um, so look up Bonnie McCliss. She had a great explanation for it. She was on a uh, she was on your truce. I think it was your can't remember what it was. You can give me the name of the show next, Noel, <laughs> and I'll put it out there. But she was talking about how this this eclipse is actually kind of reuniting all these fraction parts of yourself that have been fractioned. So the idea here is that we fraction off ourselves due to pain and agony. If we, you, you have a trauma, 
right? If you have something traumatic happen to you in this life or another, you naturally separate from the trauma. The body does this the same thing. Oh, it's called Next Level Soul was the podcast. Thank you, Noel. <laughs> it was Next Level Soul and it was um, Bonnie McCliss. That's, that's what I get for just bringing something up that comes to mind and not having the research. Uh, but what happens is, is the same thing happens in the body. If you have a trauma, if you're traumatized, the reason why your body will swell is to actually protect and push away the poison. If it's like a, a bee sting, it's pushing away the poison. Spirit is very similar that if you have a, a something painful happen to you, your mind pushes it away. You repress the memory. You suppress the emotions. You don't want to keep reliving the horror of it. So you literally wipe it away. But what that does is push away and fraction a part of your consciousness away from you. If you have multiple lifetimes and multiple fractures uh, and abandonments and loss and you know tragedies, you then spiritually have really fractured yourself in all these different ways. And so you're literally not whole. And we can feel that we're not whole. We can feel that we're fractured. We can feel not ourselves. We don't feel full power. We don't feel full energy. Well, since, uh, so basically since Neptune went into Pisces in 2012, God universe has been making you aware of all the fractures, making you aware of all the traumas that you've gone through, uh, making you aware of where you have emotional patterns, where your fears are, what you have repressed. And then Saturn entered into Pisces last year in March of 2023. Yes, I had to think about the year for a minute. It tells you it's Mercury retrograde right there. <laughs> I was like, is it 2023? When you're an astrologer, you're just like all over the map of time. So you you, you forget where you are in space time. Uh, but Saturn entered into Pisces. Saturn is the energy that takes responsibility. So whatever Saturn's energy is highlighting, we are suddenly feeling strong. Like we should take responsibility. So we've been taking responsibility for the first decan of Pisces, which means for our relationship to ourself, to close these loops, to reunite these fraction part of ourselves, to heal this emotional trauma, to release these feelings that are poison and toxin to our system that turn into inflammation and inflammation turns into disease. And so as we get to this eclipse, we just finished the Pisces transit where we really reunited these little pieces that were, of what were fraction and as we go into Aries, which is our ego, that's where we are now, this blast, this solar eclipse is in fact the carrying out of the unification we've made inside of ourselves. We've reunified our soul, we've ended the fractions, and now we're taking it. It's almost like posting it on the internet. We're posting it to our ego and making it so. So the ego is recognizing and accepting this inner change. What this means is because ego is resistance by nature, that's what ego does. It resists in order to fight, to survive, fight or flight, etc. If you are resisting your healing and you go into this eclipse having resisting, expect a breakdown without a question. And you have to understand, it, don't feel bad if you resist. Everyone resists their pain. Everyone resists their healing. Unless you're a part of a community like ours where you're actively trying to heal and actively trying to bring yourself into this new inner peace, you quite likely have repressed these certain parts of yourself and you have tried to forget about it. And so you don't realize it, but there's a part of you constantly resisting, constantly pushing it away or away from you. So this eclipse will kind of slap you upside the head, pull the rug out from under you and surprise you with anything that you have been resisting. And that's what happened to me in the last 24 hours, 36 hours. I realized, oh, I've been repressing certain feelings. I've been holding back how I actually felt about a few things. And I'm actually okay with it. Like my soul's okay with it, but I never really processed the feelings. So I felt it in my body. I had huge digestion issues. I had huge emotions come out. I literally had to cry and vent things out. I literally had to uh, go to bed early, drink lots of water. And I was also very thankful because... Um, because I'm actually going to be watching the eclipse actually over the weekend. I'm going to a, an event actually. So if you happen to be in Austin, Texas, I'm going to be, um, at team light, uh, uh, team lights event in Bastrop, Texas this weekend. I, I hope it helps people. I hope a bunch of you rush there and see it. I'll be there hanging out. A couple of buddies of mine are going to be there presenting. It's going to be super fun. And I'll be witnessing the full eclipse with my own eyes and probably some protection. We should ask Dr. G tonight if you if you, you really do have to protect yourself from the sun or not. There's there's back and forth about that. 
Um, you know, as far as whether you have to protect your eyes, I don't know. I'm not going to go on record, but I will ask Dr. G. So I'm glad I went through my release now because otherwise that would have been really embarrassing and difficult <laughs> like in an event. But I knew it was going to be an intense eclipse. So the way eclipses work is the, the sun, moon energy, it's almost like the sun and the moon are aware they're about to come together. And because it's dead conjunct Chiron, dead conjunct Chiron, it's going to be at uh, 19 degrees, 43 minutes, I think. I just know it nets to a seven. Exactly. Now, I can't even think of an eclipse. I, I can't think of one eclipse that conjoined a planet exactly in my entire astrological career, which is 18 years on the air and over 25 years in private. Like, I, I can't think of one. I'm more aware than I've ever been. So that in itself is kind of a miracle. But what I feel is happening is exactly what Bonnie McClis was saying on Next Level Soul. I believe that what's happening is any piece of you that is fractioned is now sort of being forced off the bus, forced off the train, forced to reunite your light. And I believe, and that's what we're calling it with our team, I believe this is the champion's recovery. And that's the theme of the week. But I believe this is the champion's recovery. Because what I believe is that we have all in this lifetime, forget past lives, let's just talk about this life. In this life, particularly since COVID, a lot of our issues have come up because we were forced to sit down, separate six feet apart, spend a lot of time with ourselves, spend a lot of time with our loved ones, sort of live virtually and disconnected from outer world distractions. And a lot of us have really realized, I think, in that COVID time, how messed up we are, what we had ignored, where we had pain. Really, honestly, I do think it was God's bidding for that to happen because I think more good has come of it or will come of it from people having to stop their lives and take a real look at their life. But I believe we have sort of, uh, particularly the light workers that I know and the light keepers have really been um, deep in their uh, reflection and their healing is what's been happening. And so the champions of the world, the ones who here who care about the world, who are here to help the world be a better place, we've been down for the last four years, really healing deeply. And I believe this eclipse is the champion's recovery. This is where we stand back up. This is where we come back up after having been kind of knocked down. And, and now that we have come together inside of ourself, we then contemplate coming together outside of ourself. Thus, Unite the Light. <laughs> this is why we're doing Unite the Light at this time, because we believe people are going to come together inside themselves. And once a person is not fractioned on the inside, a person will not blame the outside. So one of the things that happens is when we are subconscious and unaware of our internal problems, our emotional problems, our traumas, maybe even body dis-ease, if we're unaware, we subconsciously like a Rorschach test. Have you ever seen the Rorschach? It's like an ink blot test. And you're like, you look at it and you're like, snail or whatever. You, you come up with this word. What ends up happening subconsciously, when you're hurting on the inside, you end up Rorschaching and projecting it on other people. So because we are diseased on the inside, we are constantly, our ego in particular, Aries, we're constantly projecting our shift on the other people. You heard the term one point, you know, one finger pointing forward and three fingers pointing back. That's where we have been in a state of. So I think the consequence of this eclipse is that people who were on the path of healing are now going to be sort of in a Christian revival way healed. <laughs> I think, I think in a way, this is sort of like an old Christian revival where you, you are healed and you fall down and you, and you faint. That's what this moment is. And I believe that once we have this moment, I believe, because the world has been very fractioned amongst generations, amongst races, amongst economic classes, we're divided among nations. I mean, like I said, they're bombing in Lebanon right now, horrible. And I think that's all due to the fact that we've been so fractioned with ourselves on the inside. We've been blaming our brothers and sisters. Now that we are aligned in our heart and we are feeling our truth, now the workers who are here to make the earth a better place, now we can go forward, I think, with great strength and determination. And I believe that is actually what the rest of this year is about until about September. In fact, I'm just putting a prediction on the table here. I believe that you're going to see a lot of corruption come out 
between now and September. I'm just going to go on the line. And what's corruption? Corruption, ta people not paying taxes, businesses cheating, buried bodies, politicians lying, conspiracies. Yes, there are conspiracies in the world, people. It's called a business plan, actually. It's not called a conspiracy. In most cases, it's a business plan of certain organizations who are conspiring to fix prices. I'm flying to Texas this week. The airlines have all conspired and raised the prices crazy. I couldn't believe it. They totally took advantage of everyone to be there, raised the prices. I could have flown to Switzerland for what I spent on a two-hour flight to Austin. I'm just saying. That is a business plan. All the airlines, I think, have in some ways united. We'll call it a united in that way. So the point is, is that I believe that because of this big blast of spiritual, you know, spiritual, um, what's the word, disinfectant, which is the sun, moon, and Chiron conjunction. Yep, Diddy. Someone just put Diddy. Yeah, Diddy's another one. That's so crazy. You're going to see a lot of these kind of flies dropping out of the sky between now and September. And I think that this eclipse is really going to really uh, uh, push what I call the frequency races. We had a friend here, Ruben Langdon, who was talking about that the Palladians call it frequency wars. And there's going to be a war on the planet between different frequencies. Here at Sirius Joy, we're going to call it a frequency race. I believe it's a race to, uh, to liberate the world versus a race to control the world. I think those are the two races. You've got a group of people who want to liberate. You've got a group of people who want to control. That's my belief. And I believe the liberators are going to, t are going to go into the lead from this eclipse which is, yes, God intervening in free will with an eclipse. Um, and I think that they will stay in the lead through the summer of love. That's just my theory. So I've been advising all of my um, all of my friends and clients to do as much as you possibly can, take advantage of this eclipse, because this eclipse is the healed, okay? And you might fall over. You might have to burp up something nasty from the past. You might have to vomit. Some people have to go that far. You might have to feel incredible grief and incredible sorrow, I promise it's temporary. It's actually healing that's happening as painful as it may be. It's not that old dog coming around. It's you healing once and for all. Make sure you're really easy on yourself. The body does take a hit. Lots of water to cleanse out all that stuff. Nutrition, fresh food, fruits and vegetables. No dead food like meat right now. I would say just lighten up on the dead food. Eat the, uh, the alive food or the food that was just alive and give your body this reboot. From there, just to give you a little insight on what's going to happen, we have after this healing, we have this ramp up of planetary things that happen that basically push and launch basically the light workers and light keepers forward. And I say light workers and light keepers because you have to be light, light hearted, just like the Egyptians. And when you died, your, your heart was weighed on a scale of justice. The light heart got to go into heaven in the Egyptian mythology. Heavy hearts could not go to heaven. I think that was a strong symbolism for the truth that we're going to be lighthearted and in our hearts. And with that heart felt vibration, those who are lighthearted, I believe will go the farthest between now and September. There's a series of events and we'll talk about it. We have the new moon lunar uh, solar eclipse this week. Keep saying lunar. We have Mars conjoined Saturn. That's pretty powerful. We have a Kazemi moment on April 20th. We have um, Jupiter and Uranus conjoin at 21 Taurus. That's a kaboom, basically, that really pushes things really forward and fast. Then we have on May 7th, a new moon at 18 degrees. That's my birthday. We'll all be celebrating. And then on the day of Unite the Light, which is not an accident because I am an astrologer, so I plan this shift, you have a powerful conjunction of the Sun and Jupiter at 28 Taurus and Venus and Uranus at uh, 23 Taurus. So what that basically is in simple English is after this eclipse, the universe just pushes things to take off like big time. And so you're going to see things really take off because this eclipse is at a net 10 eclipse. It's an I manifest eclipse. It's about manifesting health, manifesting integrity, manifesting the health of our, of our industries, the health of our politics, the health of our world, everything. You should know that if you have something growing in you, like a bacteria or something, it could grow crazy because this is a basic fertilizer. So what's paradoxical about this is it can also grow bacteria and grow negative things to an exaggerated amount too that can take people down. 
So this eclipse is going to both knock people down and also launch people to a higher place. And I really believe this event, this is, I wish I had one of those like horns, at a, one of those loud horns, like this is the start, in my opinion, of the new era. This is the beginning of the human re-evolution. When I say this is, I mean, Monday, April 8th is the beginning of the human re-evolution. What were we waiting on all this time? We were waiting on the people who were fractured and were and fractioned inside themselves to become whole again so that the earth could become whole also. The last thing I'll say about this as well is this is the moment where we actually will shift from inner to outer focus. So we've been doing all inner work since 2020, since basically COVID. It's all been inner work, spiritual work, et cetera. Those who did the work, everything now will be focus focused on the outer world. And for the next two years, it's all about making the world a better place and preventing the world from being decayed or taken over by a totalitarian small group of families or a small group of people, basically. So, all right, that's the big stage drama. What do we do this week, Sensei? Glad you asked. So the theme of the week is the champion's recovery. We believe that the champion inside you will be recovered. Whether you are here to champion children or champion healthy fruit or champion, you know, fair prices in housing markets or champion love or just champion as a chess player. It doesn't matter what you've come to champion, but we are the champions basically. And we are being relit this week. The subplot of the week is a Kazemi inspiration a Kanzimi inspiration. Mercury and the sun are going to uh, cross. Mercury is currently retrograde. The sun is direct. It's interesting because the Kazemi is a lot like a miniature solar eclipse because Mercury comes right in front of the sun. It's like a tiny little dot too when you see it from telescopes. It's so crazy. It's almost like the sun has a blemish on itself. But then the sun's rays and Mercury then blast to the planet at 22 degrees Aries. Now that degree is innovation. It is a multi-dimensional energy. So anything that adds to a four is the door to other dimensions. That Kazemi is going to open up some sort of realization, some sort of epiphany that I don't think you would have seen until you're on the other side of the eclipse. So there is an aha moment. I think a profound aha moment and I think it's a conclusion or a realization um, of now that you have healed yourself, something you were never able to see because you were damaged or you were blocked or you were having, you know, your own karma and your own issues. So Kazemi is when Mercury and the sun come together, Elena. <laughs> like sometimes I see it something just pops in my head. One of the comments does. Um, so the key question of the week is, now, what does the future hold? So what does the future hold now? Sun and planet, not sure what I said there. So what does the future hold? Now that I have this epiphany, now that I have this eclipse, now that I have, um, oh yeah, not just Mercury, right? It's any planet. But in this particular case, the most popular is actually Mercury and the sun as far as it, but Venus is a pretty, pretty hot Kazemi also. Energetically, what this means is, we're not quite sure what the fate of the world will be at the beginning of the week, but now that you've gone through this eclipse and this Kazemi, you might have a completely different opinion. In fact, we have one other major transit this week. We have Mars conjoining Saturn on Wednesday, April 10th. Uh, and then that, that conjunction, Mars and Saturn, does mean that the ego and the controlling part of ourself unite, a conjunction, another uniting, where the ego and control is on the same page. So if you look at the whole week, as far as alignment is concerned, you have the sun and the moon con, uh, conjoining for the new moon uh, solar eclipse. That's the heart and emotions getting together on the same side. Then you have Mars and Saturn conjoining on Wednesday. That's ego and control issues coming together on the same side. Then you have Mercury, Kazemi, the sun, which is Mercury and the sun, which is the mind and the heart coming together on the same side. Do you see the pattern here? We are uniting our inner self on the inside. We are coming together and uniting our inner light. And that was going to be our setup for, of course, to unite the light uh, in the outer world in May. So let's take a look a little nano on this. First of all, we'll start with the energy in Aries. So we've got a whole party going on in Aries. If you don't know, Mercury is retrograde. 
which means that we are thinking backwards. This week, the sun moves from step 17 to step 23. The eclipse is on step 19. So as of tomorrow, you're going to make some sort of decision about your behavior going forward. These mid degrees of Aries are basically behavior. It's your program behavior. It's your Pavlovian behavior. So if you, you know, jump when you hear a loud noise, that's those degrees of, you know, um, 11 degrees to 19 degrees Aries. It is the behavior that you are known for. It's your responses. It's your defenses. It's when you push or when you don't push, when you yield, when you stop, when you, when you slam hard on the gas, that's what the air, mid degrees of Aries is. So what ends up happening is, is tomorrow on Saturday, we commit to a new behavior, a new action that we intend to do. I'm assuming that this action is based on healing, based on what we have come to realize about ourselves. So on Saturn day is ruled by Saturn this week. It's ruled by Saturn, 17 degrees. So tomorrow you decide, okay, this is my behavior. This is what I'm going to do. On Sunday, you begin to do that behavior. Now, what I believe you ought to do is behave according to your health, according to your healing, according to uh, what you have learned. So you're, you're deliberately initiating behavior. So let's say, for instance, you've gotten over the fear of water. Go swimming. Decide to go swimming on Saturday. Go swimming on Sunday. What you're doing is you're putting into motion that you are now on the path of this healing, that the healing has happened. And it's, it's so happened that you're going to do something and actually create a cause that will generate an effect. And because this is Aries, you can't just sit down and meditate on it. You can't just make a vision board and stare at it all day. You got to actually do, and you got to do what it is you intend to do and what your heart intends to be. So decide tomorrow, act on Sunday. Okay. Sunday. That's what it's named after is the sun. And by the way, Sunday is love fest day. And I'll show you the love fest chart, but you're going to feel the love of believing in yourself on Sunday. So it's kind of like Rocky music playing this inspirational music. By the way, if you're wondering why I always use 70s songs for inspiration, it's because they don't make inspiring songs anymore. Everything is dark and depressing for the most part. I know I sound like an old man, but Give me in the chat one inspiring song, maybe Firework of Katy Perry like five years ago. I don't know. But the point is, is you put it into action on Sunday. Then the eclipse on Monday is almost like the universe catches your, your action and, and makes it bigger, amplifies it. So whatever you have in motion by Monday gets multiplied by the universe. And you may ask, how the hell does that happen? Oh, you'll see. You'll see, you'll see people make big deals out of nothing. You'll see people ex expand stuff. You'll see sales go higher than you expected them to go. It's like everyone will be in a good mood and everyone will just be playing along. That's what an eclipse at net 10 does. It ultimately creates this, um, uh, this powerful amplifier of what you were doing. So the energy gets amplified on Monday. On Tuesday, it is going to be eclipse hangover. Okay. Step 20 rules a day. So you're going to feel if you didn't already have the feeling. So what happens is for people who are more malleable and willing to go with the flow of the universe, you'll have a breakdown before the eclipse. If you're holding on and resisting like hell, you'll have a breakdown after the eclipse. And that is a, an eclipse hangover. So I actually feel that um, Tuesday will be a lot of emotional breakdown for a lot of people. And I also feel for those who already had the breakdown, it's going to be sort of like Superman opening up the super, the big S is like, you're going to start to feel this new champion coming out of you on Tuesday. On Wednesday, it's step 21 when it starts to get fun. On Wednesday, you start to see the world in a whole new light. Like it's not the same world anymore. Now I do have a minor theory that we might be changing timelines of this eclipse. And I don't have the time to go into timelines in this episode but I do think it's a quick, good possibility that we actually shift timelines. And so on Wednesday, it's sort of like, oh, I don't recognize my life. My life doesn't feel the same. Everything doesn't feel the way it has felt in the past. On Wednesday, Mars and Saturn can join. On Wednesday, Pluto goes to two degrees. So I'll talk about it when I show you the charts with major stuff. And then Thursday is the Kazemi where Mercury, which is right here, 
will cross in front of the sun, which is right here. And that will be the Kazemi moment where um, your heart and your mind have an epiphany at step 22. And then on Friday, when I'm back next week and have returned on a new timeline, step 23 rules, which means you will have a new vision for the future. So in essence, I am putting on the table right now that your belief about what the future is will be different one week from today. That's what I believe. Next week, this time, you're going to be like, I actually think the future is going to be this, not this. We're going to switch timelines. There may be, it may be the same future you once had, and there might be this extra addendum that you add to this future idea that you had never seen before after the Kazemi. Now, Chiron is at step 19 all week long. 19 is I manifest. Chiron is a healing. So this is the manifestation of the healing. And the North Node is at step 15. And step 15 is the path of least resistance. So one thing that's very important is that, um, is that you know that if you have options for what path to take, take the shortcut. I'm not saying cut anything out or skip steps or do something half astro. But I am saying if you could uh, clean the kitchen without cleaning out from under the fridge, do that. This is a time where you're not getting any extra credit from God by doing stuff that's not important right now. The people who just take the path of least resistance, the one that's very easy, clear and present, uh, been there, done that, or I know exactly how to do it. The North Node of 15 says, take that path right now. That's the path to take. Trust me, the world will get hard hard enough, like sometime around September anyways. All right. So that is what's going on in Aries. Now in the state of Pisces, we got a party going on there too. Four planets in Pisces. If you don't know, Pisces is our spiritual state of awareness. It is the part of us that uh, is our subconscious. So when you have four planets in the consciousness of subconscious, you have your subconscious is super stirring. But as I just mentioned in the open of the show, this is where all the fractioning is. So you have all these tools helping you to stir up and change where you are fractioned on the inside and bring a unity to your subconscious energy inside of you. Now, Mars, of course, let's see, should we start with Mars? Let's start with Venus. Venus at from one to nine degrees, uh, Pisces means that this whole week, you're going to open up and really accept that you've changed on the inside, that you now feel different. You're going to sort of wear it like a suit. So you're going to really feel that, wow, I feel different. I can feel the change. I can feel the difference, which I think is very powerful. So you're going to feel this difference. Mars, on the other hand, is our ego energy. It's what rules Aries. And this is probably the only reason why the Earth is not going to explode in this particular eclipse, because Mars is in Pisces. It's not in Aries. So Mars itself is rather chilled out in this exchange. Mars from 11 to 15. Pisces means that our ego is now moving to change our daily life. So your ego is in a place this week to really look at your daily life. You've already cleaned out the inside of you. You know you're not the sick one anymore. You know that you've come into a unity consciousness inside yourself. And so Mars is basically policing your daily life and realizing, wow, when I was really fractioned on the inside, I sure made a lot of examples of that case in the outside. This relationship is a reflection of me being fractured. This relationship is a, is a reflection of my fear of water. This relationship is a, you know, this relationship to Doritos <laughs> is my reflection of me not caring for my body or loving my body. So the ego starts to police the daily world. Now, what happens is, is Mars will conjoin Saturn at 14 degrees on Wednesday, hump day. Mars is our ego. Saturn is our the way we control things and the way we manage things. And so the ego and our control will get on the same page, step 14 Pisces. What that is, is you're going to come to a conclusion. Oh yeah, sorry, Doritos are bad. <laughs> you're going to come to a conclusion uh, that you have to take a certain attitude about your life. So I predict after the eclipse on Wednesday, hump day, always the middle day, you're going to adopt a new attitude on life, a new way of looking at life, a new way of talking about life, a new way of addressing life. And this will be a policy, which is Saturn, and a procedure, which is Mars. So policy and procedure come together on the same team on Wednesday. And Neptune at 28 degrees is basically manifesting 
manifesting our spiritual journey, our destiny. So this is sort of an antenna. That's what I see that little Neptune sign as, as an antenna. It's an antenna that is ultimately tuning in to our higher self or our deep subconscious and helping us to make real uh, exactly what it is that we came here to do. So this is sort of like our spiritual guidance, our steering wheel, our ability to look both ways and our ability to accelerate ourselves all in the sign of Pisces, which is our subconscious. Now, I believe our subconscious is what stores our past life intentions or our between life intentions. So I actually believe what's happening here is we are actually activating another chapter in our spiritual destiny. Now, looking at the moon, it's going to be super moody. We start, of course, with the moon in Pisces. And so that's actually right now going through the weekend. Moon in Pisces on Saturday and Sunday so that's going to be a lot of that spiritual processing. Would not be surprised if you cry, have to process some uh, some deep feelings, have to really bring to your uh, your feelings a, to a neutrality. Maybe, again, this is stuff you tend to repress and tend to push down inside of you. So, you know, I was surprised. I still was upset about something, but I processed it. I processed it. So, you know, you're going to do some processing emotionally this weekend. Then, of course, on Sunday, the moon goes into Aries. I predict getting a little feisty on Sunday because the moon now is moving in towards the sun for the eclipse. The energy and the intensity are going to rise and going to build. Uh, and so Sunday night will be really intense. I think I'll be at a dance party, which is good because I need to dance my astro off just to get it out of my system. And then, of course, we have the eclipse on Monday. And then we have the aftermath on Tuesday. So the moon moves in Tuesday. So the first part of Tuesday is still the uh, eclipse hangover. Then the moon moves into Taurus late Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So for steps 20, 21, and 22, you're basically manifesting the new era. Taurus is I manifest. So you're going to emotionally create the new platform. So basically we are cleansed uh, with the first two moons. And then by Tuesday night, you start manifesting the new, the new reality, the new world, the new foundation. Don't let's not forget Mars and Saturn have come together with a new attitude about life. And then on Thursday, the Kazemi moment happens with the moon in Taurus. So that Kazemi leads to a change. So when the moon's in Taurus, we make it into something important. We, we add value to it. So basically for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you're making these changes very valuable in your life. You're equating them to life changes. You're equating them to things, you know, relationship changes. You're equating them to purchases. You're equating them to uh, investments. So, you know, it all, it all adds up and means something Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then next Friday, when I'm live here with you, once again, the moon moves into Gemini. It actually moves into Gemini late Thursday. So it actually moves in late Thursday. So the Kazemi with Mercury has the moon in Gemini. So we really process that, that uh, Mercury Kazemi. And then Friday, we start to come to conclusion. So Friday's a step 23 day, a Mercury ruled day. And the moon will be in Gemini, the sign Mercury rules. So it's sort of a no brainer. By next Friday, you are thinking and feeling completely different about your life with probably the reservations you once held gone. We'll see. I'll bet you that that's what happens. I'll put, place a bet. Now, another major move this week is in Aquarius. We have Pluto move from one to two degrees Aquarius. This is a big deal. This is a big deal that we have with, with it uh, from one to two degrees um, because uh because two is emotion, and that actually moves to, into two degrees on Thursday. Um, uh, on Thursday, and what that ultimately means is that we open up on Thursday to start feeling different vibrations that we've never felt before. So energetically, um, on Thursday, you might start to feel a whole nother reality. What's interesting is, is that it goes to two degrees and that's also the Kazemi. So it's quite possible that we really have a huge epiphany on Thursday because once Pluto hits two, it opens all frequencies of ascension, a pretty powerful thing. But we do also face fear. Let's go to Virgo. Black Moon Lilt Virgo shows a huge shift. Now, Black Moon Lilt is our fear. It goes from 20 to 21. That means that we go from fearing the future altogether, 20, to fearing a specific future, 21. And since we're going to fear a specific future, I'm thinking we're going to know what that future is. Guess when we actually have it go to step 21? 
on Monday. So as of Monday, you are now fearing a specific future or you are facing fears you have about a specific narrative. That tells me that, yes, on the eclipse, the narrative does officially change. And then finally, our manifesting energy, Taurus, Jupiter in Taurus and Uranus in Taurus. Jupiter goes from 18 to 19. 19 is the same degree as the eclipse. It goes there on Monday. So actually, I'll show you the eclipse chart here in a second. It's the sun, the moon, and Chiron at 19, and Jupiter goes to 19 Taurus at the same time. So it's a mega, mega, mega manifestation eclipse. It's not just the sun, moon, and Chiron. It's also Jupiter, the multiplier of this energy. Uranus also now at step 21. So that means that we have unlimited potential as far as how far and how wide we can manifest. So put simply, it's a hell of a manifestation party going on this week. I believe by the time I come here next week, I'm going to look different, smell different, and be a lot richer for it. <laughs> Probably better too. Let's take a look at the planets real quick, and let me show you what I am talking about here. Whoops, that's the wrong button. I almost did in, I almost did in broadcast. That would have been quite a Mercury retrograde moment. Keep streaming for Dr. G. His name is Dr. Christian Gonzalez. Never met a Christian I didn't like. Uh, we'll be talking tonight. So... Again, real quickly, um, tomorrow, Saturday, we have step 17. You can see the sun is coming into conjunction with, with Chiron. Something I didn't talk about, but Venus actually sextiles Pluto on Saturday also. So this is a real energy saying it's you got to love yourself right now and love yourself some more. So we're raising the self-love here. You can see Merc the moon is cross Saturn and cross Mars. That's a lot of spiritual processing that happens um, between now and uh, Saturday afternoon. So we're feeling that. Remember, we make a commitment at step 17 to go forward. We have Love Fest Day on Sunday. Love Fest is when the moon crosses Venus. Love Fest is at three degrees Sag, which means that we're falling in love with what we believe about ourselves. So we basically really start to believe in ourselves around 12 20 p.m. Eastern time. You're going to be feeling like a million bucks, is my prediction. Then, of course, we have the new moon solar eclipse on April 8th. Let's just take a look at this real quickly up close. Sun, moon, and Chiron at 19 degrees. That is it. 1924. I had it wrong. 24, not 34. Pretty amazing. That's the eclipse. 1924. Three energies, right? Here's the Earth getting blasted. Um, <clears throat> Mercury retrograde at 24. That means our mind is opening up and accepting. Pretty interesting that Mercury is conjoining the asteroid and more. That means we're turning this into a love story and control and conjoining Eris. That means we're turning into a fierce love story, a fierce love story about the future. That's very interesting, I find. Jupiter at 19, also like the three planets at 19. By the way, Jupiter was 18 just the day prior. So the fact that it goes to 19 and semi sextiles this party is significant. Uranus at 21, when it starts to get fun, unlimited potential for growth. Another dimensional shift here. Remember, anything that adds to a four is the door. Mars at 13 net four, Venus at four degrees. So ultimately, this means that we are shifting an inner spiritual dimension. This is the inner spiritual dimension. This is the inner ego dimension. So there's an inner dimensional shift that happens inside of us at that time. Then moving along, Sun conjuncts Chiron later that night. We'll skip now to Wednesday. Wednesday, this is when we have the ego and our control issues get on the same page. <clears throat> so ego and control both get on the same page of having a mindfulness, um, a mindfulness about what to do in our spiritual life. And then we have the Kazemi, which happens on Thursday. That's the sun of Mercury at 22 degrees Aries. That's the epiphany that will happen around 7 p.m. So Thursday night, I'll actually be, I think, in the air. That's interesting. I can high altitude, but we're going to reach a high altitude of thinking on Thursday. And, uh, and that's really it. The, the week ends on Friday. We'll just see how the week ends. 23 degrees is, the, is a Mercury rule degree. Um, Mercury has now gone to 22. So we basically come to a new conclusion about our life on this Friday. So pretty interesting. And the moon is at, at that moment, at the exact moment of the conjunction, uh, the moon is at 13 degrees also. So a lot of a lot of shifting. So I argue that by next week, this time, we feel ourselves like we're on another planet. We're not on, the, on another timeline. We're off to the races, so to speak. So with that said, I think it is time now 
for us to grab ourselves some tea. I have my new mug that I got from Bernadette King, and let's have our tea time. All right, friends, welcome to Tea Time. Always a pleasure to be of soul service here. If you're not familiar, this is the part of the show where I'll talk about your zodiac astrology sign and what you can expect for the upcoming week. And I understand that Dr. G is tight on time, so we're going to go through these at a relatively fast pace tonight and make sure that we can have time with our uh, beloved guest. This week, what I'm going to talk about in each of the 12 signs is the new moon solar eclipse, like where is the eclipse going to call for you to manifest a change in behavior that is a result of, um, of you now having brought together your inner self to a new intention. All right. Then I'm going to talk about the earth and Libra because the earth and Libra means that you're going to end up manifesting as a result, new collaborations or new teamwork as a result of that new behavior. Then I'll talk about Mars conjoining Saturn and where it is that your ego and your control issues are coming to the same intention or same action ability uh, when, it, when it comes to your spiritual approach. So where are you going to now move forward where your mind, where your ego, excuse me, and your control issues are on the same page? And then lastly, I'll talk about the Mercury Kazemi and where you're going to have an epiphany on Thursday. So basically, I'm giving you sort of a, a week forecast of how things are going to happen really in that order in the in the order of the week because mars conjoining saturn is wednesday and the kazemi is thursday all right and as always i'll put to the side here what sign i am speaking to i have my hydrogen water with me and we can begin with aries aries this new moon solar eclipse for you is about behavior it's now time to manifest behavior that represents your healed self so this is a behavior change an upgrade to your behavior. It's time to behave differently and to basically put into practice uh, your healing changes. So that's how you respond. I would imagine for a lot of Aries, that's you walking by the open window, you walking by the, uh, the opportunity to mess up again, and instead choosing to opt out of certain behaviors and probably choosing to begin certain healthy behaviors. So this is a major eclipse around ego, identity, defensiveness, strength, determination, willpower, all these things. This is what is now healing to a galactic level. The Earth and Libra says that you're going to be now this week starting to manifest new partnerships. So expect new marriage and partnerships. That could be business partnerships, strategic alliances, um, best friends forever who go fishing. It's new alliance, alliances that end up happening um, that are now going to manifest as a result of this new behavior. So now that you're all sparkly new and, and rebooted and the Phoenix has risen, basically you are now attracted to other people and other people who weren't attracted to you are now attracted to you. And this will be phasing in, by the way, I should just say disclaimer, these changes will take until probably Libra, which is of course, September for them to come into full effect. Mars conjoining Saturn means that, uh, Aries are now going to have a strong faith. Your ego and your control is going to be focused on a very strong faith uh, in life or in something. So if you've been a little wavy with your faith, you're going to find that sharpen up pretty incredibly. And you're going to find that you stop fighting yourself or stop second guessing or you stop uh, worrying about something you were worrying. I do think puddles will dry up as far as worries and anxieties are concerned, particularly about things that you're obsessing over, particularly things about uh, traumas or dramas you had in childhood. And you're going to have one mind and one attitude about what you have faith in. And that could be a faith in a person, a faith in project, faith in God, faith in, faith in the universe. And the Mercury Kazemi moment on Thursday is actually going to be an inspiration about your character. You're probably going to download a new title for yourself. I am this, the grand I am. I am this. I am this now. I am that now. And so this will be the grand I am of this character that you have become or that you intend to become. This character might be tied to an action. In other words, it might be tied to, I'm going to be a plumber. I'm going to be single. I'm going to be married. I'm going to be a mother. It could be something like that. Um, but ultimately it is a download. And I think this is going to be the character that you play probably for the next three to five years from what I can gather. FYI. Okay. Taurus. I love the way I say Taurus, don't you? 
Taurus, you are having a you are having a grand I am statement about your spirituality. I think Tauruses are going to come to realize that they are destined for something, destined for something great. It's just that feeling when you're alone on a cliff and you're looking over at the sunset and you go, I know I'm the one that's meant to do this. I know this is what I was meant to be and what I was meant to do. So I think it's a very strong spiritual knowing of uh, what must happen in your life. And similar to Aries, you once doubted, but now you are so sure. So this grand I am statement is, I am this destiny. Basically, I am this potential for destiny. With the earth in Libra, it means that there's going to be a change of lifestyle. You're going to manifest a different lifestyle and you're going to want to become a different person in the moment. And so as a result of this fate, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to change your life. And boy, things are changing. I can say that's happening for me already. The Mars can join Saturn. It's going to be a clarity of what your ego wants to take responsibility for in society. So you're going to adopt something in society, adopt a campaign, adopt, you know, be part of a, of a, be a part of a charity, be a part of a cause, be a part of a movement, start a movement. I mean, Tauruses are the master builders of the new era. You might start a movement, but basically your ego is taking responsibility for your role, kind of, kind of gathering around a certain idea, a certain vision for how you see the world. So I really get this picture of Taurus is like on a mountain, kind of like seeing the future of the world. And the Kazemi moment on Thursday for you is actually uh, your relationship to God and the universe. You're going to realize something about your fate, something about something you promised God, something about what God promised you. You're going to have this Kazemi realization that uh, you are or not ordinary. You are special. Are other people special? Yes. But what makes a person special is that they realize they're special and God's children, everyone is special when they realize it. So I think Tauruses are going to really realize that they are special. All righty, drinking my water. Gemini! Gemini, you have a grand I am statement as far as to who you are in the world and the role you intend to play in the world. So this is sort of like understanding you have a world title. This is understanding that you uh, are important, a part of a network, understanding that you are here to create the network or have a reputation or be known for something or play a role in the world. Keep in mind, the world could be your family. The world could be you at work. The world could be, it's your world. Whatever your world is, you have this grand I am statement of who I am in the world. That's what it's going to be. Now, uh, the earth in Libra says you're going to, at the same time, get right to business, manifesting a personal dream. So you're going to really understand that you have a personal dream that you want to make a reality. And so you're going to manifest this dream uh, and move forward and start working to make this dream come true. So I think Geminis are really going to be on a happy path. I'm excited. Mars conjoining Saturn says your ego is going to take responsibility in your career. You're going to realize that you want a promotion or that you want to move your career to something more interesting, or you might finally realize what it is you want to be when you grow up, but you're going to really accept responsibility for a destined path that leads to a career. And the Mercury Kazemi moment will be more powerful for you than other signs because you are Gemini and ruled by Mercury. That Kazemi moment ultimately is that you're going to realize that you have a special role in society. It's going to be the dent you want to make in the world or what it is you want to achieve or reputation goal that you have. So I think that grand I am is that you are to play a role in the society and the Kazemi is that you are to do something specific or what that specific role happens to be. All right, moving on. Cancer. Cancers, your grind I am is a career leadership moment. Cancers are realizing that they are to be something in their career, probably something their heart has always wanted, maybe didn't admit it, but now they realize that they have a career legacy achievement that they are here to create. So their hearts go, I am ready to be this thing in my career. So I think cancers are going to move very fast in their career and migrate to where they belong in their career. Now with the earth in Libra, they will also at the same time realize they need a better home family foundation to support that career. So cancers are going to realize it's time to move or redecorate or do some deep spring cleaning. But basically they're going to start to uh, kind of store nuts for the winter, start basically build things that give them an emotional security that makes them feel secure. And that security is the basis of them being able to uh, really thrive and go forward in that career. 
Um, now the Mars Saturn conjunction is their ego is going to take responsibility for a belief they have about life. They have a certain belief. So they're rallying behind a belief. You are rallying behind a philosophy. You're rallying behind a school of thought. You're rallying behind a travel plan or something you want to do with the world travel. You're basically on some sort of a life purpose that your ego and your commitment side is coming together on. It's an idea of a certain purpose that you feel a calling to. And the Kazemi moment that happens on Thursday is that you realize something of your legacy, that you have a legacy you did not realize that you had, that you have the potential for a certain legacy in the world, a potential to leave a certain mark in the world, to make a dent, as my friend Chris Rex says. And this may also be, depending on your age, you realizing where you want to retire or how you want to retire. All right. What's the drinking game about this, this time, Michelle? All righty. Leos, the royalty and the leaders of love. Leos are creating a grand I am statement about what they believe in life. They are rallying behind a belief. They're building a character around a belief structure. That belief may be a school of thought. It may be a book that you're writing. It may be um, a program you're putting out to the world. It could be an academy that you're creating or um, some sort of a curriculum you're creating. You're becoming this person that's tied to this, this belief, this purpose, this something that you find to be meaningful and important that you want to share with your fellow earthlings. So your grand I am is based on a certain belief in in life. Now, when this happens, you're going to then want to manifest with the earth in Libra, a whole bunch of literature, manifest a book, manifest uh, communications, podcasts, manifest your plans for the future, a, a strategy for how you intend to implement this particular school of thought. So it's a very cerebral time for Leos. Their heart is really uh, in the clouds about creating some sort of a belief and manifesting the intellectual um, uh, I was going to say propaganda. <laughs> That's not a fair word. Intellectual um, intelligence, intellectual property. That's what I was looking for. The intellectual property that will support that new belief and that new uh, calling that they feel. Now, with Mars and Saturn conjoining, their ego and their control issues are combining. Them. Their ego is taking responsibility for certain boundaries that they must draw with others and with themselves in order to make this happen. So Leos, you're going to have to cut things out. You're going to have to open up to things. You're going to have a certain idea and a certain philosophy or a certain attitude about what stays in and what goes. So I do think Leos in particular will be leaving behind certain relationships that are a drag on them and opening up to relationships that they need to consider in their life. The Kazemi moment on Thursday for Leos is this new purpose, this new uh, vision of who they are. I get this kind of superhero on a, on a hill with a cape flying kind of image in my third eye when I look at Leos. They just feel revitalized as to what their purpose and calling is in life. So this is going to be exciting because Leos are, of course, huge instigators of passion and they get people excited about ideas. All right, moving on. Virgo, the virtuosos. Virgos, you are creating a Kazemi moment when it comes to your boundary changes. Virgos are going to change everything. Everything must go. It's a giant garage sale. They're changing their life. They're getting rid of the dead weight. They're opening up to what they've always wanted. They're moving things around. And that may sound like a normal Virgo because they do like to do deep cleaning, but this is probably the deepest cleaning their ever their life has ever had. They're getting super deep and changing all their boundaries with others according to who they are becoming and who they are. So Virgos might have been sort of holding back and not speaking up for themselves, or maybe you um, were trying to push someone and you were crossing a boundary and you realized, you know what, if I'm having to push this hard, I'm not even supposed to work with this person. I'm not even supposed to be doing this. So it's this changing of boundaries with others. But in the big picture, it's you becoming who you want to be by changing boundaries with others. Okay. Now, the earth in Libra means that Virgos are going to actually start getting really productive. The consequences of this is that you're going to manifest like a mofo. You're going to be creating uh, money revenue opportunities, residual income, um, all sorts of ways of making things. Okay. So once you rearrange everything in your life, you're going to be able to make things happen, to make money, to create abundance. So you sort of get to work, typical Virgo, making money and abundance. 
The conjunction of Mars and Saturn says your ego is taking responsibility now for relationships. Virgos are about to give notice to anyone that is out of line, literally. So you're now going to get strong about your relationships. This is your relationship to food, your relationship to others, your relationship to everything. Okay. And so it's time to take responsibility and, and have a new idea about relationships. And the Mercury Kazemi on Thursday is you're going to have a vision of how your life is going to evolve that your life is gonna transform in front of your very eyes. And I think you're gonna quick look at exactly what that change happens to be. Drink after every sign. Libras. Libras are having a Kazemi moment about relationships. You are realizing now that relationships are, are important like they always have been, but you're having a transformation of who you now are in relationships. You have a new identity. Maybe you used to be the fixer. Maybe you used to be the healer. Maybe you used to be the codependent one. You are something else. The grand I am is I am something else now in the relationship. That'd be a personal marital relationship. Could be a relationship to candy. Could be a relationship to a professional person. Could be a relationship to your children. But it's a new I am statement in relationships. Now, but given that Libras rule relationships, this is a big change for relationship, big change for Libras. We probably haven't seen Libras change this much in about 18 years. It's that big. Now, this means that with the Earth in Libra, you're going to start manifesting a new character, a new personality, new behaviors, being known for doing different things, letting old behaviors go away, maybe retiring from certain jobs, picking up new jobs, picking up new titles and new activities. Mars conjoining Saturn says that you're going to get your ego and responsibility or your ego is going to become very responsible about a daily life change. A shift in your life, routines, a shift in work, a shift in what you do for work, a shift in what, who you work with, the equipment you use for work. So a daily life, practical, grounded change of living in a higher dimension in daily life than you have before and really taking responsibility for making that happen. The Kazemi moment is actually in partnerships. You're going to realize that you're probably going to partner or decouple from a business alliance, a romantic interest, a strategic alliance, let's say among two brands. Basically, you're going to have a Kazemi moment that there's a transformation of partnerships or your current partnership is about to go to a much higher level together, which would also count in that Kazemi. All right. Scorpios. Scorpios, you have a grand I am statement about how you want to live your daily life. This is a lifestyle, Kazemi, that in life, you're no longer the hero or no longer the fixer or no longer the one that has to say what the boundaries are. Instead, you are dot, dot, dot. So Scorpios are commanding a new vision of who they are in daily life, who they are in their, um, in their lifestyle. It could be a job change, by the way a location change. It could be just a way of life change. You're going to wake up at 6 a.m. and do Tai Chi now. It could be all sorts of things, but it's a, it's a lifestyle change. It's going to happen and it's a defining lifestyle. It makes you someone else than you were before. This means that with the earth in Libra, you're now going to manifest this great faith in God, a new relationship to God, a new way of feeling uh, of how you're connected to God. You could say you're going to manifest a new fate that you're going to realize I wasn't destined for this. I'm destined for that. So I think it's a new destiny that unfolds for you and you manifest this new destiny. Um, Mars and Saturn says your ego is going to take responsibility for love, creativity, and romance. So you might rally behind something you're creating, such as a piece of work or music or art or a book, or maybe it's uh, around children, the highest creation there is, or maybe you're taking responsibility for a particular romance and taking a new approach to a romance or something your heart desires. The Kazemi moment is going to be a realization of what your lifestyle is going to become. Like, wow, I'm going to be the king or queen of this, or I'm going to be the number one seller of that, or I'm going to be the first one to market to do that. So your Kazemi is this lifestyle realization as a result of becoming someone different in your daily routines. Sagittarius. Sagittarius are having a grand I am about love, romance, and creativity. 
I think Sages might be falling in love or they might be deciding that they are ready for love or they might be deciding that their current love stinks. This could also be a grand I am as far as parenting, as far as being a mother or a father because children are in the fifth house. This could also be that you decide that you are an artist or that you are something creative and you're not a lawyer or you're not like what your parents told you to go to college for. So it's a grand I am of creativity. And one of the reasons why I've called this the unicorn, that you will be the unicorn in this life. Now with the earth in uh, Libra, it means you're going to manifest new social ambition. You're going to realize that you are now destined to be something else in society if you're now this artist or this creative person or this person in love or whatever. So you're manifesting new social ambition, new things that you want to be in the world or how you want the world to see you as a result. Mars conjoining Saturn says your ego is going to take responsibility for feelings with others. This is a new attitude about how you respond to other people's feelings, particularly how you respond to your family's feelings or people that you live with. So it is a new ego control agenda for how to manage feelings and feelings for others, your feelings for him, your feelings for her, your feelings for it. You're taking responsibility for those feelings now. And the Kazemi moment is you're going to realize a dream or wish that you have that you probably didn't realize before. You might come out of the closet and realize, yeah, you do want to be a singer or you do want to be an influencer or you do want to, you know, um, follow your dreams, even though it's kind of quirky or, or strange. So I think Sages are really sort of got a very rainbow moment here where they're going to see something magical coming up. Capricorns. Capricorns have a grand Kasimi moment for their feelings for others. So they're going to realize that um, that they need to manifest certain feelings that feel good, neutralize feelings. You might realize that you need to heal from a situation. You might need, realize you need to overcome a childhood wound or trauma. You might realize that you have great feelings for others that you weren't even paying attention to. You may realize that your feelings for others are much more powerful than you once thought. So it's a very emotionally grounded home family foundation. You might be manifesting a home. You might be manifesting a family. That will be the most literal interpretation of the event. But overall, it's a new emotional grounded security. The earth in Libra says that you're going to now start to manifest a new direction as far as your career and legacy. So because you feel grounded, you might feel more courageous to go for something a bit more ambitious or perhaps more long lasting in your career. So you're going to see some success in your career as a result of grounding yourself. And you might find that it was your feelings that were keeping you from being able to go for your career. Now, Mars and Saturn says that your ego is going to take responsibility for ideas and communication, that you might find the way to say it, the way to communicate it, the way to analyze it. You might find the algorithm. You might draw out the AI intelligence. So you're going to have an intelligent realization and conclusion and how you should proceed with a certain line of thought, communication, or perhaps an intellectual property. And the Kazemi moment is going to be this moment on Thursday where you realize that you emotionally really feel called to something like, wow, I'm really close to that person or, oh, wow, my heart really cares about living in Italy or, wow, it really is important for me to have this house. So there's some realization about life and family and emotional nurturing that becomes incredibly obvious to you on Thursday. Aquarius. Aquariuses are having a Kazemi moment about ideas or communication. Aquariuses might download a brilliant idea. They might realize they're meant to pursue a brilliant idea. They may realize it's time to write their book. They may realize it's time to speak up. They may realize that they're the messenger that the earth is waiting for. So this is a big intellectual grand I am that they realize they have the information. They have the way to say it. <clears throat> they have the answers. They have the intellectual property. With the earth in Libra, you then realize, ah, if this is my idea, then I have to make this is my life's purpose. So it's a very intellectual, grand, amazing idea that leads to a purpose, to leads to an updated purpose, that leads to a philosophy or a religion in life that you feel is your spiritual calling. Mars and Saturn will conjoin to where your ego will take responsibility now for money and productivity. You're probably going to now invest in something, a major purchase, a refinance, um, a new line of revenue, a new product or service that will come out. 
And with the Kazemi, uh, at the end of the week, you're going to have this brilliant idea come down. Maybe you already had the brilliant idea with the Eclipse, and then on Thursday, you're going to know how to go about it. Or maybe you download the idea with the Eclipse, but by Thursday, you find the brilliant title for that book or title for that song or title for that record. So it's an intellectually captivating week for the Aquariuses where they're going to walk away more brilliant than they started. And then the Pisces. Pisces, you are having a grand I am around money, productivity, or business. You're going to realize it is time to make money. It is time to invest. It is time to cash in on those stocks. It's time to go Bitcoin, whatever. I'm not telling you any way to go. I'm just saying it's time. You're going to realize that you're not poor, that you are capable, that you don't have to work for the man to be able to get what you want. So you're going to really break a lot of spells that you have been under around money and really own your value and really own what you're capable of manifesting. I would say that this is the end of money problems for Pisces officially. Okay, this is the end of that karma. The earth in Libra says you're going to realize that your whole life is going to evolve now that you've moved away from this money situation, that you have all sorts of opportunities, maybe moving, maybe getting a new car, maybe hiring someone, all sorts of realizations of how life can change now that you have this grand I am of what you are worth. Mars and Saturn come together in your sign. So you're going to have a real wake up call about behavior. Maybe you've been too defensive about money. Maybe you've been too defensive at work. Maybe you've been overly aggressive. Maybe you've been underly aggressive. So you're going to realize that your behavior and your responses really do need to change. And your grand I am statement, the Kazemi moment on Thursday, is you're going to realize probably an idea to get rich, an idea to have abundance, an idea to get to pay for a major purchase. So probably some brilliant flash of inspiration in how to make the money that you deserve. All right. That is our Zodiac for the week, folks. We're going to go to a quick break right now. When I come back, it is Dr. G talking about health and also how to get over disease. Keep streaming. It'll be about three and a half minutes. We'll be right back. Zodiac Weathers from Saturday, April 6th to Friday, April 12th, 2024. Looking ahead at the weekend forecast, it's really preparation for the solar eclipse and committing to where you want to heal. Let's drill down. On Saturday, it's sunny and committed. Step 17 means that Saturn rules the day. This will be a bit of a serious day, but also an empowering day. The moon is in Pisces, so you may be feeling some old karma, particularly with other people. But you are committing now to what you seek to heal and being called to embrace self-love with Venus sextiling Pluto. On Sunday, it's sunny and brazen. Step 18 means Mars rules the day, making this a grandmaster day. This is a day where actions will speak louder than words. Be careful of reactions as well. It's time to take action and move ahead for your healing. You're opening up to some new convictions. And it's Love Fest Day. Tell everyone you love that you love them. The moon will shift from Pisces into Aries on countdown for the eclipse. Looking ahead to the week forecast for all five days and your mood casts it looks like over the course of the week you're going to have a major solar eclipse on monday and the rest of the week is pretty much recovery on monday it's sunny and vigilant step 19 means earth rules the day for this new moon solar eclipse called the champions return this total solar eclipse will cast a shadow across the united states the theme of the eclipse is i was made for this and the sun will directly conjoin Chiron and the moon for this galactic event. This event will be a powerful healing and may force certain issues in your consciousness up to the surface. Due to the power of this eclipse, we advise you use caution with heavy machinery or doing anything that may be considered risky behavior. On Tuesday, it's sunny and worthy. Step 20 means the moon rules the day. And this, of course, is the day after the new moon solar eclipse. So you're probably feeling emotional insecurities. You are processing eclipse aftermath and you are feeling out what the future will bring. The moon will shift from strong, fiery Aries into Taurus, which will start to ground you towards the end of the day. On Wednesday, hump day, it's sunny and expanding. Step 21 means it's time to start some fun. Jupiter rules this day, and so you'll now expand your options for the future and begin to articulate your plan. 
Plus, Mars can join Saturn, bringing a clear, crisp understanding of the attitude to take about your karma during the day. And the moon in Taurus will make you feel valuable and worthy. On Thursday, it's sunny and analytical. Step 22 means Uranus rules the day. This is a day for divine inspiration that will arrive. That's because we have a Mercury Kazemi, Mercury retrograde, passing through the center of the sun. Expect incredible inspiration from your higher self, and you're reconsidering just where you do belong in the future. It might be a change now that the eclipse has happened, and the moon will shift from Taurus into Gemini, so things get rather pensive or chatty towards the end of the day. And then on Friday, it's sunny and shifting. Step 23 means Mercury retrograde rules the day. There's a triple dose of that Mercury energy with the moon in Gemini as well. On this day, you're finally getting clear about the future and incorporating all the aspects of the eclipse, and you're processing the many possibilities and probabilities of the future. It's serious joy, joy, joy. Hello and welcome to Astro Mingle, the spiritual podcast that mingles with the talented light workers and innovative influencers of our time. The human body is the embodiment of the soul, and modern medicine is beginning to look at the energetic and psychological principles that play into health and dis-ease. My guest tonight is both an influencer and a medical doctor. Dr. Christian Gonzalez, aka Dr. G, completed his doctorate of naturopathic medicine at the University of Bridgepoint College of Naturopathic Medicine in 2014. Mercury is retrograde. During his time there, he took interest in many fields of medicine, but it wasn't until his mother passed of cancer that he decided to shift his focus to oncology. It was not long before Dr. G realized that cancer was not simply nutritional or exercise-based. It's much more of that than that. He discovered everything in life is connected from the foods we eat to the way we think and they interact with the world and the people in our lives. Because of this, Dr. G has shifted from working with patients to focusing his energy on mass education. He now hosts a weekly podcast on YouTube, actually multiple episodes in a week, called Heal Thyself. Please send some waves of love and gratitude to my guest tonight, Step 10 Leo, Dr. Christian Gonzalez, a.k.a. Dr. G. Hello, sir. Hello, thank you for having me. I've never gotten introduced, and I've done a lot of these, as a Step 10 Leo. I don't even <laughs> yeah. it, but I'm excited to know what it is. Uh, it's an abundant Leo. It's a, it's a Leo who can manifest like no other. It's a Taurus, it's a Taurus-esque Leo, hmm. energetically. And I did look at your chart. We could talk about it sometime if you like. But uh, yeah, sure. yeah, I think you're actually one of our first Leos, to be honest, uh, which is interesting. Y'all been hiding. <laughs> yeah, we took a little bit of a break, but now we're coming out with the, the, the big Leo energy. You totally are. I don't know if you heard your horoscope, but that's exactly what I predicted for Leo. It's like your purpose is here. Well, I haven't heard anything, but I'm just feeling into what's been happening. And I, I, I can definitely feel that. You do feel? Big time, big time. It feels like the past two years have been a cave and the dark mud. And now I'm, I feel since December, really good, ready to go. You, you just said it. Every Leo from your Leo, to your lips to every Leo in the room. <laughs> so... How did you get, you seem like a really cool doctor. I mean, Dr. G, you could have been a rapper with that name, even like it's such a cool name. You got I rap. Do, I rap. Oh, you do rap? Oh my God, that's awesome. That's, that's my awesome. number one hobby. I freestyle. Hey, listen, hey, everybody watch out. There's a little Spotify album in August coming out. Whoa. Songs, two freestyle songs and one song with one of my dear friends who's a beautiful singer. Wow, that's so cool. That's really cool. And that, that's great too. You'd be like the schoolhouse rock of medicine. You, you, are you mixing in your disciplines or are you rap? What are you rapping about? No, I'm not. It's more spiritual conscious, but then it's also just like, I'm a New Yorker, you know what I mean? So we talk a little bit about New York energy, but sometimes I'll have fun with it. I'll talk about like matcha in a rap and talking about how it's protecting her. But, you know, I just get, it's, it's more creative energy coming out as healing. That's great. And I think creativity is like God consciousness. So it's, it's creativity is one way we get very spiritual and connected to our higher self, you know, and some of the deep themes going on in our life. So yeah, again, so a rapper, what made you become a doctor? How did you get into that in the first place? Uh, listen, I, I know that I've always been connected to uh, healing energy. And initially I, I had wanted to help in the form of uh, fixing teeth. So I went to dental school. I wanted to be a dentist. I wanted to be an orthodontist. And the cards didn't fall that way, particularly because you had mentioned my mom got sick and died of cancer. So uh, being in school when she was sick, 
actually shifted the trajectory of my life because I got mm-hmm. to see like, how we treat cancer. I didn't know. I never met anyone with cancer. And all of a sudden, my mom has it. And I'm going to her visits with her. And I'm seeing just how disconnected the medical system is from nutrition. At the, at the base level, nutrition, not even knowing how to feed uh, in a healthy way my, the foods my mom needed to eat. So that changed my whole perspective. There was a series of events that led me into this form of medicine that I'm in that pulled me away from becoming a, a dentist and, and really living more so in my purpose. And, and it's still unfolding, this purpose, but um, healer, healer, like the, the, how can I bring in uh, authentic expression? That's my number one thing is like, I want people to feel so good in their bodies, so without the fear of judgment from others that they can embody their highest self, sort of soul mm. form, the full expanse, the, all that darkness and all the light. Yeah. It, and we really need more of that. And for me, that is what health is. We talk about health and it's not the absence of the disease. It's it's embodying who you are in human form. So your soul can just bring in everything that it's supposed to do in this in this lifetime. That's that's what I want to do. And I'm doing it through whatever route that I'm doing it through medicine, education, maybe even sometimes rapping. I think it's brilliant. Did you find you said you didn't really like the way your mother was the treatment she went through? Are, are you was it chemotherapy? Because a lot of people have argued that chemotherapy does is what actually kills the person. I, I, I work in a, when I worked in, in cancer and, uh, and years after I did my residency in cancer, I worked integratively. And um, look, I, I can't say that uh, chemotherapy, surgery, radiation are not indicated for everyone across the board. Uh, but but it also would be stupid to say that we all need the same thing across the board. The standard of care for cancer misses major, major pieces for cancer, major. Mm. Because we look at it mechanistically, as if the body makes a mistake. The body doesn't make mistakes. The stars don't make mistakes. Everything, there's always connection. There's always intention. And yeah. something as sophisticated as the body knows what it's doing, even in cancer. So we and our egoic minds think that we could trump the body's way of thinking and we treat cancer as the problem and it is a problem because it may kill you right it right. will at some point but but we treat it as not the solution of the body if we work well with the body and understood why cancer then we can begin to start healing it more it's not just physical disease cancer is not a physical disease actually i would i would venture to say that cancer is more uh, emotional energetic disruption in the body manifested as a physical disruption downstream more people more the people who i've seen have miraculous healings from cancer and my and i've seen close to 2000 cancer patients in my life the people i've seen who have miraculous healings are the people who had a new sense of self they've expanded who they think they are and they've embodied more of who they came to be that means they're living in less fear and being more of who they are supposed to be. They are expressive. They're letting go of all the people, places, things, situations, circumstances that do not align with who they know they are. They're letting go of all the crap and aligning their body. And that's that's the interesting, and, and look, a lot of people done chemotherapy, radiation, surgery. Some people opted not to. For me, that is a side, that's a, a side treatment for something deeper. And we need to come to that depth of what is causing us to be sick. And I believe that's a, that is a massive root, if not the biggest root, if not the biggest root of all. You know, well, I don't know if you know this because you're you're just dabbling in astrology now or starting to. I just saw a Deborah Silverman episode you did, which was great, by the way. I Deborah, um, who I think is she's a Gemini. I thought, but you know, Cancer in astrology is emotion. Yeah, that's that's the, that is the emotional sign. That is the sign that rules emotion. So it's literally named after. I don't even know where the name Cancer came from, but that's kind of a weird coincidence. And I will say that in my with my clients, every client that I have, everyone who has fa- has faced cancer has repressed or traumatized emotion in their astrology. It's all in their astrology, uh, where they have held it all in and repressed it and sort of fought down those feelings. So I see the same trends as what I'm saying in my yeah, work. incredible. And 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 it's I hope that we're moving towards a collective convergence of all these disciplines where we can actually work together and see what is the best way to help people. Um, and, and I think that, listen, 10 years ago, I graduated almost 15 years ago. They, they, we were not even talking about that stuff. You know, just, just talking about supplements was too woo-woo. 
Now it's wow. changing, you know? So, so I'm hoping, but it, it's so interesting to hear cancer as emotion, because for me, I work with emotions. That that's, that's what I truly believe. Yeah. And so even specifically, like the placement of the moon tells you where the client's emotions currently are focused. So, um, yeah. And cancer, and also the moon is the fastest state of awareness is the highest frequency of one every, every, uh, you know, 28 days, Mercury, our mind is once every 88 days around the sun. So it's a different, it's the fastest frequency we have too. Yeah. Uh, and obviously I'm a Libra moon. I'm a Libra moon. That's what I know. <clears throat> I know you are, <laughs> Yeah, which makes so, you very fair and balanced and open and receptive. A Libra moon is very receptive. I'd imagine that you, when you're in front of a patient, you're picking up on a lot of unscientific information. <laughs> For sure. I listen to, to what they're really saying behind that sentence, you know? Right. And that's that Libra moon. It's it's an empathic moon that can really read, basically compare yourself to the subject and can really read the subject based on you as the baseline is how Libra moons work. Yeah. Okay. okay. Really powerful. So if you're not in alignment, you won't get as great of a read, you know, mm -hmm. like if you're not in a neutral place, just so you know. Yeah. Okay. Libras, are, you can't hide from a Libra moon. You can't hide. You can't lie either. <laughs> no, I know when people are lying. I, I see it. I feel it. You know, yeah. I, Oh, so that's all Libra moon, man. This has been since I was a kid. Oh yeah, for sure. You were born that way. Yeah. And I would argue that somewhere in a, you know, that you learned and developed that sensitivity somewhere, you know, you probably, if your mom had some sort of repressed emotion, you might've been very nurturing to her. Did you read her yeah. growing up? And yep. yeah, she did. Yeah. She did. I was the, unfortunately the emotional caretaker a, a lot of the time for my mom's emotions um, that were repressed and she died of cancer that were repressed big time. Um, so I learned, I, I guess you're saying it was in the stars and then learning through experience in, in, with the cards dealt that, that it became stronger. Absolutely. I mean, what we believe, or I can say what I believe is that you, your soul already was this way. And astrology is, is really a time as a launch point to come in. So the moment you are born is the moment that the universe is vibrating precisely to who the same character that you are already. So mm -hmm. the stars don't uh, make us, they reflect us basically. Oof. That's how we believe. But then they, then they mess with us afterwards. Then, then they start poking at you. So, um, you know, you mentioned on one of your podcasts that we don't know anything about the synergistic effects about the combinations of chemicals in our life right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a great episode, by the way. What currently, I mean, and we're, our community who's watching, we're all health nuts. We're all trying to avoid cancer. <laughs> Like we want to look pretty and age well. Um, what chemicals do you find to be right now just the most dangerous that you're worried about? I love this question because uh, I, if I was to identify in disciplines as a doctor, it would be as in the emotional healing, the repressed emotions, the expressions, the authenticity, and the environmental toxins that we're exposed to. When it comes to the top ones that are really causing damage, it would be the endocrine disrupting chemicals. Those are one of the biggest concerns. Those are the phthalates, the BPA, the dioxins, mm. even the, the PFAS, and I'll, I'll go into, I'll break them down. But, but BPA and phthalates, those are things that are making plastic soft. So think Tupperware, think the lining of cans uh, okay. or aluminum cans that we're using. Think plastic bags, plastic water bottles. Those unfortunately especially in high temperatures leach these chemicals into whatever medium the food stuff the drinks and and when we take in these chemicals they mimic estrogen in our body and estrogen wow. ain't a good thing not, not when it's out of balance we have on the forefront a major fertility issue major yes. 70s male sperm is cut in half it's yep. not as robust um, uh, women aren't able to get pregnant when I, when I was really practicing and I had a, my white coat on, I saw a lot of infertility. There's different pieces that I saw to it, but one of the big thing is endocrine disrupting chemicals. So those are the things it, it mimics estrogen and it, and, 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 and it binds to the receptors of our cells, just like estrogen, and it activates those estrogenic effects. That's not a good thing. Cause then we're looking at not only feminization in men, right? Yep your testosterone starts going down, but also we see diseases like prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, uterine cancer, right? So again, cancer has the, this is why I say it's, there's different pieces to cancer. I, I believe the root is on the emotions, but we have to think about the, the food, working out, environmental toxins, that's all in there in that, in that cup 
depending on your genetics, how big is that cup? How much can it handle? Some of us have mm. shot glasses. Some of us has has gallon bathtubs, multi-gallon bathtubs that we were really robust. Those are the people who smoke cigarettes and, and they don't die. They're, they're built like oxes. They never get cancer. They die yeah. of old age. But it's different. It's different now. We're more stressed. Our genes epigenetically are expressing more diseases because of the environment. So that's a major, major one. PFAS, polyfluorinated chemicals that are found in things like Teflon. Teflon, anything nonstick. So we, now we're thinking cookware. But we're also thinking the things that we put on our body. There's a lot of nonstick or stain free or wrinkle resistant shirts or pants or underwear. They did an um, independent investigation of yoga pants and they found that a lot of the yoga pants in the crotch area were high in PFAS. That's a problem because we're absorbing them. We're absorbing wow. them we're getting in the drinking water. That's something where, and all these chemicals are also found in the drinking water. Very important to get a filtered water system. Those are, are, are major ones, and then the pesticides. Pesticides, mm. they can have endocrine disrupting effects. They can have inflammatory effects. They can all, most of them are going to disrupt our gut. Uh, they're, quanti- they're causing oxidation in the, in the cells of our body. Our mitochondria, which is creating energy, is being disrupted. So pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, these are all things that are being sprayed on a lot of these chemicals. And they use heavy metals too, that are being sprayed on a lot of the food, the produce that we eat. And that's a problem because a lot of these chemicals, we don't just pee them out. A lot of them have an affinity for our body and they stay in the fat and they build up over time. So those are the major, major ones that I would look at and and we can avoid them. Yeah. Staying away from plastic, opting for glass or stainless steel water bottles, not heating up anything in plastic. When it comes to PFAS, changing to to stay away from nonstick, moisture wicking, and that's also moist, uh, nonstick is like lipsticks that, 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 that are put on eyeliner. Those are also, so we have to start slowly auditing what are we putting in our body because it's a slow drip when it comes to environmental toxins. You can walk in a place, you won't get super sick, uh, but it might, take, it might take time. You're putting something in your skin, you're putting something in your mouth, right? You're putting it, you feel it, you're, you're getting the cosmetics, you're getting your shampoo, that builds up over time. So those are my, my top chemicals. Well, wow, and I just think of all the gender fluidity happening right now, and I can't help but wonder if some of it is just from our our food supply. I mean, I've never seen so many people confused about their gender. Um, it, it is, can I say this? this that's, a valid, that's a valid statement because, and I want to be very sensitive. To, I'm, I'm be, sensitive too. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. you know. Like, but, it, but it's worth questioning. It's worth questioning. How much are endocrine disrupting chemicals causing feminization in, in, in us, like, uh, can, do we feel imbalance in our own, not only identity, but just our expression of sex hormones, right? How do sex hormones express in our bodies? And, and when we're bringing down our testosterone, that's not only affecting our energy, and it's not only affecting our libido, but feminization means that you're, you're, you're actively expressing more of estrogenic qualities, right? The right. Estrogen is beautiful, it's a softness, right? It, it's, it's secondary sex characteristics for women. But also, what, we're not supposed to have that in high amounts as men, right? Women have right. testosterone, we have estrogen, but it's in a balance. What happens when we're exposed to that? I mean, it, I wish, I, I haven't seen a study, there might be a study um, that would objectively put that statement in, into science, but it's worth questioning. It's worth questioning with the context of sensitivity to people's expression of how they want to live their life. That's fine with me, but let's question that too. A hundred percent, I agree. And I also feel that people have... I think we've been overly polarized in gender anyways. And it's like men have always had a feminine side and women have always had a masculine side and our society never really allotted for that. We were sort of pushed into corners. So I think there's an energetic side to the, to it as well. Just accepting these, these energies, but even breast cancer for men is on the rise. It's on the rise. And I didn't even know that was possible. Oh yeah, for sure. I've seen a few men with breast cancer and not, not, not that many, but yeah, it's on the rise. So again, again, we're talking about hormone disruption, inflammation in the body. It's worth questioning it, on all of us. You know, I, I don't just give problems about solutions. We can do that. We can get a, a glass water filter. We can get a high quality. This is, where do you want to invest your money? Invest it in a water filter. Invest it in an air filter in your home. Uh, the Environmental Working Group has a fantastic database. You can actually cross-reference anything. You could probably find your cleaning supplies, your soaps, your shampoos, your makeup on there, and it'll give you letter grades. And if yours doesn't pass a test, get it, get one. Invest your money in something that you're going to be able, especially if you're using it every day, invest your money in something that is going to be 
not detrimental to your health, but actually adding to your health, or at least in a neutral state, cleaning supplies, laundry detergent, it, it, everything that we don't think of needs to be thought of without getting too crazy. Slowly, you're, you're okay if you do it slowly, phase it out, but start taking those steps. It's going to be very important, especially if you have kids and your kids are having allergies, eczema, uh, asthma, right? If they, if they have all of a sudden sinus infections, respiratory issues, skin issues, neurological issues, immune issues, what's the environment like? You have to question what your environment is like 100%. I mean, I was born in the 70s and I've I've seen people are sicker, more allergic, allergic to peanuts, allergic to all these things. It was never a thing before. Autoimmune disease is just through the roof uh, as far as, you know, which wasn't even a word when I was a kid. <laughs> Pretty crazy. crazy to think about. It really is. It really is because we talk about gluten sensitivity, right? Like it right. may have been around as far as like, oh, I have an allergy to the protein, the bleed in protein in wheat, barley or rye. But there's people who are not only now, they, they forget about celiac disease. There's people who are just sensitive. Like I've seen it myself. Yeah. People, people who eat gluten, they have skin issues. They have brain fog. They have gut issues. It's yeah. worth it's worth just going, well, what's happening to my immune system, right? We're stressed. We're a very stressed society, especially here in America. And we have emotional repression. Yeah. But there's a variable that's changed since the 70s. People were stressed in the 70s. There's a variable that changed. And You're right. And variable is the introduction of these exogenous chemicals into our system slowly but surely yeah and well i mean you've you brought up there this is one of my questions glyphosate like glyphosate seems pretty not good for you <laughs> you know yeah it, it's look I, I had multiple stances on this um i avoid pesticides and food aside from the shady practices of of the, the cover-ups of bringing glyphosate to the masses, right? And when I talk about cover-ups, we're talking about high level, and this is public information when Monsanto was in trial. It yes. became public information of how they hid their testing. They paid off investigators. They paid off judges. Um, they changed their, their studies. They changed their studies. And some of the studies they ran were blatantly incorrect as far as absorption studies of glyphosate. And, and, and that's a problem because emails that they found from their chief scientist saying, we don't, we can't say glyphosate is safe, right? This is all public information. That's incredible. Now, if you have, a, a, if you go out to eat and you have food, let's say you have, um, what's it, corn. Let's say you have corn. There's a corn, there's corn oil in your food, or you might have a cob of corn and it's, it has glyphosate on it. You ain't going to die, right? Like, so we take a breath. But if there's foods that are that are really doused in pesticides, then we have to really start thinking. Remember, it's cumulative over time. Yeah. So it, 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 we just have to be aware of how it affects our system, and it will affect our gut. It does have an affinity for the gut microbiome, and and it'll imbalance the gut, and it'll cause gut inflammation. Glyphosate is is around. It's in and it's and it's here, and it's in our system. We now have to make the steps to avoid it, but that's just all pesticides across the board too. Mm -hmm. That's my take on it. I mean, I've been very vocal about it over the past few years, but right now I go, I am so vocal and, and I used to be really tight and, and constricted and going, I'm not, never going out to eat and I have to really avoid, but that can cause stress too. That's why I say, everyone take a breath. You can live your life. It's an everyday thing. So look at what you have in your home and you're feeding your kids and you're having for breakfast, lunch and dinner as part of your, ritual coffee right get a good coffee ritual matcha get a good matcha if you're eating salads every day what are those produce in there what, what, what are they being exposed to now you have to really start questioning it i believe i i completely agree have you so i'm going to switch to a similar is have you heard of this product appeal this uh organic spray oh. on allegedly organic there's a big there's a lot of talk amongst our community that it's not healthy do you have any medical insight on that it might be too soon it is too soon. I, I and I wish I can give you. I wish I can say, hey, let me give you the inside scoop. Two yeah. things. It's, it's too. It, I've just started hearing about it, and two, I admittedly haven't researched fully into it, so I don't have. I want to want to give any incorrect answers or any stray anyone the wrong way. Sure. But when we do this again, you know, I'm okay. coming for information. All right, you heard it here, folks. I love that. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's it's fishy. The fact that it's sprayed on organic vegetables too just is really, really right. raised eyebrow kind of suspicious. Like, 
uh, the whole point is for them not to have anything on them in the first place. What is your opinion since we're on this topic of chemicals about fluoride in the public water system? Oof, I did one of my first ever shows on my podcast, and I've done 260 something was on uh, fluoride. Okay. And I was in middle school. And I remember thinking to myself, That's right. You know, why, why when we're working with fluoride and we're learning about fluoride, no one's telling us the big picture. We're learning about, oh, it's strong for the teeth. It, it, it helps mineralization of the enamel. That's beautiful. Like we want that, especially since cavities is a big issue for people. Um, but we don't talk about what it does to the body. And, and in dental school, I started researching about fluoride because I was like, something's fishy here, right? And I didn't really hear uh, much about it before. And there was an Instagram that was talking about it or people bringing up these questions, except like small blogs and websites. But, it, but fluoride has an affinity for the brain, as do all of the halogens. They affect the, 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 the fluorine, the chlorine. These are, these are things that are affecting oh. negatively, right? Bromine. So fluoride has an affinity for the brain. And no one has ever set up a, 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 a multi a, a multi system study, right? Seeing okay, how is it affecting every system? But we do know it has affinity for the brain. We actually know it has an affinity for the pineal gland, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of spiritual folk here, right? And, and the, the yep. seed soul, right? The connection to the spirit world. And how do they know this? Because they they test and they see and cadavers. They see their pineal gland, but there's also certain studies preliminary years ago, and I, I would love to follow up on them again. I haven't, and it's just you're bringing this up, building up in the bones. It may be implicated with a certain form of muscle or bone cancer. It was one of the two. So fluoride is not necessarily what we think it is. It's a byproduct of industry, right? So they're using that byproduct that the, the it's a waste product in the industry that's utilized, and they're using that compound to put into the water, to fluoridate our water. It's also implicated in lower IQ levels in children. That's crazy, okay? Yeah, that's so not good. Tap water, since I, before I was even a doctor, I was like, no. And, and as, I, as I went through all this process and learning and researching over the years, it's, a, it's absolutely not. There's, there's nothing, it, it, you have to understand, tap water is at a level that is going to be, not kill you. That's what they're doing. They're getting rid of all the microbes. They're putting chlorine. They're, they're correlating it, getting rid of all the microbes so we don't die, so we don't develop infectious diseases. But understand that, that there are chemicals in there, right? There's, there's endocrine disrupting chemicals, hormone disrupting. There's, there's uh, chlorine, there's fluoride, there's pesticides, there's birth control, antidepressants that are found in small amounts in tap water. Imagine you're drinking tap water all the time. So it's so important. That's why I say invest in a high quality water filter to clean out your water, especially from these chemicals. And, and when I say high quality, I don't mean like Brita. I mean, put some money into it and get one that is doing the job, a reverse osmo. I have a reverse osmosis countertop one, right? Mm -hmm. Great, beautiful. I replace every six months, I'll replace the, the filters. I don't have to worry about the water anymore. So to answer your question, fluoride, I 100% I, I, I say, please avoid it. Please avoid it. And we're spending tax dollars on dumping it in because we care about our citizens' teeth? Come on. <laughs> and we don't, first of all, when it comes to cavities, I mean, like, we're not thinking it's, – it's not just a, a crappy diet. That is going to affect you. But we have to think about things like mouth breathing. We mouth breathe, dries up the saliva. A lot of you out there don't even know you're mouth breathing during the day. You definitely don't know that you're doing it when you're sleeping, you know? And one of the best interventions – and you don't want to do this here sleep apnea or talk to your doctor first but one of the best interventions i've ever done was mouth tape i had since i was little i had cavities and i would mouth breathe and i mouth tape i never had cavities again it's been like six years i haven't had cavities any cavities and i and i and i go what well what's happening i've moved all the sugar all the crappy food why do i still get cavities so you really want to think about it's not just the fluoride hydroxy appetite tooth toothpaste is really uh, mimics fluoride. It's, just, it's, it's similar to fluoride in its ability to uh, strengthen the enamel. So you can get a, a toothpaste that has nano hydroxy particles in there. There's, there's multiple ones. There's multi, you just type it in, right? And, and, and use that and, and you don't have to take fluoride. I mean, I'm, it's, it, it, talk to your dentist, but th that's what I do. Yeah, no. Uh, well, I, my dentist and I, we tangle a little bit because I always avoid the fluoride treatment. <laughs> Yeah, why, why, not, why don't you want it, huh? 
<laughs> yeah, I think I'm flagged in the system there <laughs> as a what's a non-compliant and troublemaker. Non <laughs> That's the term they're like non-compliant. You're non-compliant. Independent That's thinker. A, say again. Independent thinker, right? You should be flagged as an independent thinker, right? Like someone who actually advocates for themselves, who does research, who who asks questions, right? I don't right. want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but but ain't no one looking out for you. The FDA is not, the EPA is not. I learned that many years ago and, and I moved away from having that emotional expression of like, I'm angry with it to, to being like, okay, well, that's that, but let's empower ourselves. We can do it. We have education now. We have resources. Environmental Working Group wasn't even around when I was talking about this in the beginning. Now they've built a database that we can find the best toothpaste, the best, the best. I have no, no affiliation with them. The best soaps, the best anything. Who are they? Say it again. I didn't quite hear it. Environmental Working Group, ewg.org. Well, thank you for that. Thank That's you, great. Man. I plug them way too much. You, I don't think so. Now, if you're helping the world, that is until yeah. Bill Gates buys the the company, right? Like, <laughs> well, he buys it, and then all of a sudden you're seeing they fall off the yeah, right. over there, and all these, yeah, Mister Clean. Yeah, um, you had a podcast just three days ago, and we're going to give everyone where you or all your podcasts are called "How Dangerous Skin Products Are." So again, so you've, here's another department is our, our skin products. What skin products are in fact, not, not good for us in your opinion. That one was about uh, a chemical called benzene and it mm -hmm. is like formaldehyde, a known carcinogen. This is a chemical that was found in hand sanitizers. It was found in uh, sunblock and now found in acne products. So oh, wow. when I was young. I remember I saw commercials for uh, Clearasil all the time, Proactive all the time. They yep. were putting all of them right. That's when they were really big. And a lot of people in my school would use that. Knock on wood, I never had a pimple outbreaks like that. But they found that these uh, acne products, and it's not just those, there's, there's some from Walgreens, some from Target, some from Walmart, when they're exposed to elevated heat. And now we're not talking about like, you're gonna melt the bottle heat. We're talking about just leaving it in your car in the summer for a few hours will activate this chemical from benzoyl peroxide will break down that benzene and now you're putting it on your skin and now it's absorbing into your body and it's not just oh a tiny little amount and they it made more it was at i believe 110 i think it was 110 to 220 times more than the limit than the safe limit on top of that it was found to not only just be in in, in the in the bottle and and being put on the skin, but also aromatically. It was in the air around the bottle. That's a problem right? because it's a problem. Here's why. Because some people go, all right, I'll just buy it and not, and not leave it in my car or leave it in, in, a, in a hot, like under the sun in my backyard. But you don't know how it's shipped. You don't know how it's handled. You don't know how hot the warehouses are, right? That's and you don't know point. how hot those boxes are. And, and, and like, let's just say that if it's possible, and then it's a really hot truck driving across Arizona to Southern California. And then it's shipped in a really hot warehouse because ain't no one putting on the AC or paying for that bill shipped to a really hot air warehouse. Theoretically, it's already creating that chemical by the time it gets to your store shelf. It's worth thinking about. And, and, and we don't have to go crazy for it. But again, acne products are acne products. There's a different route to acne than just, you know, we're not we're not deficient in clear so, right? We, we have to be... <laughs> <laughs> we have to be working on the gut, right? We have to we're working on inflammation, emotional aspects, even to anger, hormones, all those things, the chemicals that we were talking about. Yeah. And actually going back to the glyphosate, I mean, when the gut bacteria is destroyed, it's a big part of our immune system, is what I'm starting to understand, right? So uh so as a result, we have more bacteria than we should have in our system, and that could lead to breaking out and things like that. Yeah, yeah. You know the the microbiome is the, is the most incredible thing I think that we've come across in the past 25 years. Yeah. It, in that, we learn very, very, almost pretty quickly over the past 25 years, that's faster than, than we would learn about what we thought about it, is that, that it's implicated in everything. It's implicated in our immune system. They, they cross talk with different chemical signals, the immune system and the, and the gut, the state of the healthy gut and the state of the healthy immune system. They play into each other. Usually, if you have a really crappy gut, your immune system is going to be affected. But it's not just that. It's hormones. Your gut talks very, very, very distinctly up the vagus nerve to your brain, and then your brain down the vagus nerve to the gut. And they talk to each other. Most of those signals, 80%, go from the gut to the brain. So 
your brain is literally getting information every day, all day, every second about the state of your gut. Is there an infection? Is it stress? Is there inflammation? So yes, the immune system, the hormones, right? Because that, that gut brain access, these are where your hormones are being created, right? The signal for your, all your hormones are coming from here, right behind, right, right behind here. So mm. that's a problem because if your gut's a mess and it's saying I'm a mess and then the hormones are being affected, then yeah, that's, that's predisposing you towards many issues, many diseases, many inflammatory states. So we really have to watch out for the things that are affecting our gut. Right. And, and we can the gut, the gut responds to good food. And I'm talking about fiber rich food, soluble and insoluble fiber going to help the gut. Right. So eat your chia seeds, eat your apples, eat your, mm. eat your greens, eat the things that are rich in fiber that you're able to feed the guys down there, these buggers. And they're giving you back one of the most powerful anti-inflammatories or those short chain fatty acids that the gut creates as as a result of you feeding it fiber are some of the most anti-inflammatory molecules that exist. That's crazy. So it's literally, mm. thank you for feeding me. I'm going to give you, I'm going to put out some fires in your body. That's why fiber, I mean, if, if a diet isn't talking about fiber, I'm not interested. We have to talk about eating more fiber. We're not getting enough fiber. We're not. We need to at least double it slowly to make sure that we're feeding our, our good bacteria. And not only that, prebiotic foods, uh, fermented foods, fantastic for the gut. Some people have histamine intolerance. I, I have issues with histamine, but I can't eat fermented food straight. So I eat a lot of fiber. Hmm. And fiber, you said apples, just to go over that list again. Pro, all the produce, all of the, all the colors of the rainbow, fruits, vegetables. That's what you want to look at. You ain't going to get fiber from chicken, um, right. you want your fruits and vegetables. That's why you need balance. However you eat, however you eat, but make sure that you're getting a bed of, of greens or a bed of orange or purples or blues. You, one of my favorites are raspberries, right? Like that's big bang for buck fiber. Like you take a few handfuls, you're, you're, you're getting in a really good place for the day. And blueberries too, right? They're also oh, blueberries. Blueberries. They're incredible for the brain. Incredible. And that's my favorite fruit. I can go, oh. I actually will go through a whole pack of it. We have a place over here in, in Southern California called call air one. And, 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 and it is crazy overpriced everything but the blueberries right. are more than worth the money the blueberries are the fat ones you bite it it's got all of this good juice it's not sour it's not too sweet and you feel your body vibrating it feels so they got they figured out blueberries hmm. i love blueberries that's good you've just encouraged me um going back to skin creams what about the, the there's another theory among i'm throwing out all these different things that we talk about in our community and one of them is that sunblock might actually cause skin cancer instead of prevent it is that are there studies to that effect? Is that just a? No, it's not. It, but 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 I, I wouldn't say it's a direct connection that you're putting on sunblock and it's causing your skin cancer. I will say that you have to be very vigilant on what you're putting on your skin because the skin will absorb, right? It'll absorb. What happens when we put on sunblock? Why do we need to reapply it? Did you sweat it all out? No, it's because it's been absorbed into your body. Right? right. So, okay, let's think about that. There's different chemicals. One of them being benzene, the one that I just talked about, mm. right? Heavy metals, benzene, those are found. Now, would we, can I say, okay, that don't use this sunblock because it's going to cause skin cancer. You can't say that, but you, nope. can, you can say that the chemicals in sunblock, there are some that are known to cause cancer. Now, are we putting on sunblock every day, all day? I don't know. Maybe some of you live under the sun all the time. But I will say, if, if especially if you have kids, it, it, do it this summer. Get your, just get yourself a pay extra three, four dollars. Get yourself a really good quality sunblock. You can even make it at home, but get yourself a good quality sunblock. Again, and visit the Environmental Working Group website, type in sunblock, see which ones are the best. Either order it or go to your local store and find it. There's good ones out there that, um, that are rich in just zinc oxide, right? It's going to protect the skin, especially areas that are sensitive to it. But even at that, I, I, I'll, I'll challenge everyone, take some sun, take some sun. You want to get some sun. You can't just, I mean, some, I'm not talking for everyone. Some of you have really fair skin. You go out for two minutes and you're burning, but you got to get some sun. You, you got to get that vitamin D. And, and there's a reason why we evolved with the sun, okay? And, right. And, the effect of the sun on our hormones, 
on our whole system, uh, uh, the light signals into our eyes is unprecedented. It, it, it's, it's, it's probably the most powerful medicine that exists, right? Oh yeah, the sun and, and a good night's sleep, but the sun, right? So we, we wanna make sure we're at least getting some sun. This is what I do, I go out, I'll drink a lot of uh, water, I'll get, I'll get good, good food, good antioxidants in my body. And, and I go out to the sun, let's say it's a beach day, and I'll be in the sun for, for me, I can be in it 20, 30 minutes, no problem. I'm not even getting hot. But listen to your body. The moment you start getting hot internally in the sun, then you can start applying your sunblock. Um, because that's your body saying, okay, I'm done. I got all the benefit. And if you choose to not go home and stay out there, this is the time. Now start putting all the sunblock on. That works for me. But again, come into your body and listen, when is this too much? What is my body saying? If you're fair skin, your body might say in a five minutes, go, uh, sunblock, sunblock, I got enough. But darker skin like me, for me, I, I can be in it for a little bit longer. My family can too. I mean, we grew up really just being sun worshipers. <laughs> like we were always at the beach and everything. There wasn't a lot of sunblock when I was a kid. It was, and I grew up in a lot of time in Southern California too. So we love that sun. Yeah. That's good to know. So like, uh, so like zinc based sunblock, would you recommend that per se, zinc, or is that zinc oxide? You know that that'll 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 block the sun. Um, you just want to get one that that doesn't have all of the scents, all of the propellants, because a lot of them are the spray bottles. You just want to keep it basic, especially for your children. Um, that's my recommendation. Okay, excellent. Um, in your recent March 18th episode of your podcast, which is called Heal Thyself, everyone. Um, you had this one called the number one chemical to avoid, and you talked about fragrance labeling. Um, can you shed some light on the health impacts of fragrance exposures? You know, you're really on these shows, you, you know, you know, the dates and, and, the, and, the, and the titles, uh, fragrance, man. Um, look, I want, I don't want to, I don't want people to be overwhelmed. I just want you to be empowered. You all got the power to do this. You all have the power to just slowly start moving out these chemicals from your life. Fragrance is one of the chemicals that is egregious. There, you see the word fragrance, and you know, let's say there's 15, there's 15 ingredients in your skin cream, and fragrance is one of them. That fragrance can mean actually a hundred other chemicals. It's a broad spectrum umbrella term. Mm. So now you have not not 15 16 ingredients you have 115 16 ingredients that are really behind what you're putting on your skin because there's a lot and, and look some of them might not do do anything but some of them might be harmful and we know actually some of these chemicals in fragrance are harmful um a lot of a lot of synthetic scents right coming from different chemicals but also we see in fragrance a lot of the endocrine disrupting chemicals which is interestingly enough right we see that so then we go okay well you look at the back and you go, oh, I don't see anything about the BPA, it's a glass. Okay, so there's no BPA. And I remember Dr. G mentioned about phthalates, but I don't see anything that says phthalate, right? So now we're like, okay, that we might be in a good place. No PFAS, right? There's no moisture, or there's no, um, there's no, uh, not moisture wicking, but it's not creating the membrane, the, um, what the hell did I say, the Teflon? Yeah, so there's a, there's no, there's a non-stick, there's nothing non-stick. You just look at it and you go, I've, I know what, I, this is perfect. But then, you know, you look at the chemicals in there and then you look at fragrance it might have endocrine disrupting chemicals behind that word. So when wow. I say it's the number one, one that, we, we, that we don't think about, how many things have fragrance? We are obsessed with chemical synthetic fragrance. I remember when I was in college, cologne, I got to smell good. I remember when I was in college, shampoo, that's got to smell good. Oh, the body wash, I want to smell real nice. Right. right? And, and then I go downstairs to the basement and I wash my clothes. Oh, my clothes yeah. got smell, but they have to. And then let me put the little fabric softener. What do you think is happening to your hormones? That That is creating a burden to your body. And then the Glade plugins and then the candle in my room. Now you see the big and picture. The, the Febreze, the commercials just like. And on top of that, the Febreze. And that, yeah, like you know, DDT you know, going in the air. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. I, have a, I, have, I have a college day in my apartment. I'm spraying Febreze everywhere, you know? And it's like, hey, whoa. You know, like we have to think about it. That's, that's, yeah. imagine each of those that I just mentioned having a hundred different chemicals. Now we're at a thousand in, in a day from exposing ourselves. So remember, we want to look for things that are scented naturally. 
essential oil, like, like I did a show on candles. A lot of them use fragrance, chemical synthetic fragrance, right? You're, you, it's really hard to, to recreate like pine cottonwood, you know, without, without understanding, hold on, this is chemically created in a lab. Maybe there's an essential oil that is safe aromatically to breathe in for me and my kids that is better for me. And it turns out, yes, we, we need to be looking for natural scents, f- f- even foods and spices that, you know, like you go home for Christmas, Thanksgiving, someone's making a, 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 a some sort of cider and, and that's in the air. Scents, we want to think about the natural scents from nature that is not, we shouldn't overwhelm our body with scent. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be subtle, nice. Ooh, this kind of smell. I like this. This smells good. Not, whoa, I could smell that person from a mile away. I can't be around people with perfume and cologne. I'll start sneezing immediately, immediately. And, and, and it's because my system is like, what are you doing? Yeah, my dad was like Old Spice and Stetson. I can smell them right now. Right? right? <laughs> it's like so in my brain, yeah. So, no. and I would imagine natural flavors are, uh, you know, artificial flavors are also probably under a similar umbrella huh exactly. like so to create the banana flavor artificially yeah. that's probably a bunch of so you're saying that the label of artificial um <clears throat> fragrance sort of is able to mask and hide <clears throat> ingredients oh. they don't have to list on the product because it's just under that one scape yeah, wow exactly. that's very the same clever. Goes with natural flavors the same goes with natural flavors you might be wanting to stay away from pesticides and your natural fa- flavors may be derived from something made from pesta or, or, or treated with pesticides so again go for go for natural flavors we're talking about from food we should have natural flavors from food you know you it should come from lemons and limes and, and lemon zest right like what happened to us just eating food from nature you know people are like what's the best diet dr g i say anything that is majority food from nature that doesn't mean i enjoy a bag of healthy chips every now and then of course i do right that doesn't mean I ate kale chips today, you know, and and they, and they were dehydrated in a, in a package. But like most of my food, I'm cooking, or 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 I'm going to a place that has healthy food, and it's and it's of nature, right? It's of nature. It needs to be cooked or or it's raw, but it's but it's of nature. Think about it. Just that with your barometer, all the colors of the rainbow. Really think about: Did I eat all the colors of the rainbow in produce and fruits or vegetables, and did I eat good amount of fiber? If you use those pillars, it doesn't matter what diet, you're going to be doing right by your body. Mm-hmm. And you have to be careful even with restaurant choices because they're all ordering their food from the same suppliers <laughs> for the most part, like two suppliers, and and they're buying the cheapest food. And part of the reason how they make profit at restaurants is the cheapest food possible with all these artificial flavors so you don't know it's cheap. you know. And so you, you have to really find the organic restaurants that, that take pride yeah. in that. It, it, that's and, and and yeah i i echo that and and you know my friend had an organic restaurant and she had to close it because she was charging more and people didn't want it there's like why is that why is this so much why is it so much more she, you, for, she has to charge more she has to make a profit to keep the place open you know at least so you're right you know um but uh, you know i'll go out to eat once a week you know and think about how many meals we have during the week let's say 21 meals you know what yeah. i want those is not going to kill you it's it's us who's being exposed to that for at least half maybe 15 meals that's a problem mm-hmm. yeah for me it's like the 85 15 like if 85 percent of my food is all good then you know I- i'm settled for a b <laughs> yeah. bees are great yeah. bees, are, bees are great we'd be a healthier uh, world if that were the case let's shift topics just a little bit um to, you know, you have on your website a quote, and his website is docgonzalez.com. We'll put it up, doc as in D-O-C, Gonzalez. You said, um, at the root of true healing is our emotions and authenticity. So going back to emotions and authenticity, where do you, how does that play into your practice, um, emotions and authenticity? Yeah, I mean, it, it's everything. It is, it is, for me, more important than all the things we just talked about. It's yeah. Can, are you being who you who you are? Do you know who you are? And and can you connect to your body and soul and really connect to why you're here? And you know, I don't know astrology, but I I do know that there's you know I was just doing the podcast before. There's some alignment. Like you, it actually helps you see all of this. But when it comes to 
us, it's our responsibility as humans to, 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 to really, really, be, we're not here for a long time and, and you might not be here as long as you may think, yeah. but it's our responsibility to God, just feel good in our bodies. So the way that I, I bring it into my practice, I mean, I don't, I don't see clients one-on-one -on -one medically anymore. Sometimes I'll see them for emotional healing. I'll do group events, big group events. And, it, and it, I want people to be able to feel that I'm me. And on, on social media, feel that I'm me, right? There was years ago where I lived in a lot of fear. I, you know, I, I got this nose ring in 2020, but it took me 10 years to get it because I thought a doctor doesn't have a nose ring. And I was just constricted in the person I believe myself to be. Not just that, you know, and that's something small, but it's a statement for me. It was a liberation. The, the way that I dress, the way that I'll dance on my Instagram. I mean, I want, I want people to see light coming out of me when they see me dancing. I want them to see light coming out of me when they hear me rapping and artistry and soul. And that's the gift. You know, a lot of people viewing and listening, I want you to just think about like, you ever in a wedding and, and you see someone dancing and they don't care how good or bad they are. They're yeah. just enjoying themselves. There's a field of energy around them and it's an authenticity field. And it's the field that reminds us that that is us. It's a reflection of us. So we have an opportunity. We can judge them and be like, oh man, look at that guy. He doesn't know how to dance. What's he doing out there? Most of us will. We'll be afraid of that person. That's the judgment. Yeah. But some of us, if we lean into it, are invited in by that authenticity to come back to our authenticity. And we actually get up and we go around the person and we start enjoying ourselves. That's what I want. That's what I want. Not just the dancing, but I want to invite people by feeling who I am to help them remember who they are. A lot of people are going to judge me. A lot of people are going to be invited. My that's my my soul's mission here is is to do that whatever ways that I do that so that's how I in, intervene in my practice that you know I I do a lot of things that I want and not a lot of things that I don't want and some things might be good for my career but I it doesn't feel good to me and that's that's what it boils down to um and and that's empowering right and and I offer that and I actually challenge everyone viewing listening where are you not where are you not stepping into your power in your life? Where are you afraid? Where are you afraid to speak your truth? To who are you afraid to speak your truth to? You know, because we, we have that opportunity every day to be a more expanded version of who we think we are. So you feel what keeps one from being authentic is fear? Well, a few things. When we're, we're born expressed, right? Like the, everyone here who has a child or we were all children, we did not have that parameter where we go into our head and think about, oh, should I cry here? Maybe it's not a good idea. There's too many people here. Actually, I'll cause ah. this. Right? We don't think about that. We actually had no filter. We all expressed sadness and, and anger and excitement and joy without fear. We didn't care how we looked. We actually were present enough with our bodies that we allowed ourselves to express. Some point, probably around the age of seven, that shifted and our ego really came online. And that's when we learn the little boy or the little girl we need to be, especially for our parents. So if we grow up in a household where that part of us or parts of us are not accepted, let's say anger or sadness, right? Or let's say fear, you know, where it's not accepted or we see it expressed in our parents in a really pathological, destructive way, we are going to close up completely that part of us because we need to survive. It is a biological initiative in our body as children. We need to survive. So we all, all of a sudden begin to lose our authenticity. We sacrifice it in order for our survivability. We stay in that state until we're adults, until someone goes, wait, I don't feel good in my body. I have all this disease and what's happening. I believe the driver behind all of that is the constriction and tension that amounts to our body over time. And what happens through that time is we learn more and more how we're accepted and how we're loved. So as we get older, we become more constricted versions of us because more constricted versions of us are loved and accepted. Very few people go, I love you exactly how you are and you can be, do, say, or have all parts of you. Mm -hmm. If your partner says that to you, that's true love. If your partner yeah. only loves parts of you, that ain't true love. If yeah. they only because you show up happy and you're nurturing to the kids, if they don't love when you get angry or can hold you in that or don't love when you, when you cry and they, and they shut down themselves, that's not true love. So what I'm saying is that true authenticity is when we allow ourselves to come back to that unfiltered expression we had as children. That doesn't mean throw a tantrum in the middle of Whole Foods. That means having enough connection with your body and going, 
I'm angry. Oh my God, I've been angry all day. I need to go home and do a practice to move that energy because that energy will not move unless you let it move. That's the beauty of moving those emotions and, and ultimately setting you up for a healthy, knock on wood, disease-free life. Yeah, you, you mentioned also about uh, the human body having a boundary alarm that leads to repressed anger. Um, and how do you recommend a person develop a relationship to the body to make healthy boundaries? Hmm. If you don't have healthy boundaries, you most likely have repressed anger. And mm. reason being is because we oftentimes abandon ourselves in order to please another. That's yes. people. That's people pleasing. Yep. If you're a people pleaser, you're probably really angry, right? <laughs> yeah. Probably manifested right around your liver. And it could mm -hmm. manifest gut issues for most of you. IBS, SIBO, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea, all the gut issues, right? And, and that energy is the most potent energy. Anger, when it's released, is, oof, it is like really powerful. It is hot. It is loud. It is, it, it takes over the body. There's sweating, there's screams. And, and, and when, when you allow the body to express that anger, it, it changes everything. But we need anger. We yeah. have to have anger because we need our boundaries. We need to know the moment we go, hold on, early on, we need to go, huh, no, I don't think I like that. That doesn't feel good for me. I'm going to speak my truth and say, um, I love you, but that's a boundary. And I'm not going to have you speak to me that way. Right. But a lot of us, we kind of, we have unclear boundaries and we let that slide and then it goes a little deeper and then that happens again and we kind of let it slide but we wanted to say something and then we go oh, i should have said something when the, every time we swallow and push it down into our bodies it stays and it stays how many of you have done that all your life how many of you have done it all your life if you grew up with an abusive angry mother or father then the chances are you've probably done it all your life mm -hmm. so developing a healthy relationship with anger the, it is the same thing as all emotions. You have to develop a healthy relationship with your body. You have to be able to stop and be for a moment. Just stop and be because doing what we love to do here and why we're here, it's a protective mechanism why we live here, is to get away from the pain that we know we have in here. So if we give ourselves the opportunity to drop in here through just a somatic meditation or just feeling, what does it, what, how does this seat even feel? Just bringing awareness to how does my body feel the moment you begin to start doing that, your body's listening and it's going, huh, I haven't seen this guy for 28 years, 38 years, what's happening, right? And your body's going, oh my God, you keep visiting me and it begins to trust you. And as your body begins to trust you, it's going to show you exactly what it needs to show you. This isn't a mental practice. It's not rationalizing. It's not like the goal isn't for you to be like, mm, yeah, in 1993, when I was in front of the, I really swallowed my anger. That doesn't matter. This isn't therapy. That's not healing. What's healing is you bringing awareness to your body and letting your body do exactly what it needs to do because your body doesn't care about the trauma. It doesn't care about the story. It only cares that you're holding it in and it wants to express it. What a gift then, because we have the ability, it's free to connect with our, body, our bodies, feel what we need to feel, connect to it, and maybe talk to our body and say, what do you need from me, right? And if we allow that process, our body will start moving, it'll start shaking, and then a scream might come out. Maybe you want to stand up and maybe your body's calling for you to start hitting the pillow nearest by you, right? This is how we begin to move energy. When we, when we just surrender that we don't know better, our body knows better and our body's going to be, begin to express what it needs to. I love that. You're full of so much inspiration and wonderful knowledge, sir. Uh, we could talk forever. By the way, Scorpios are experts at boundaries, by the way. Uh, There's some Scorpio on my, in my chart. Oh yeah, you do. <laughs> some Scorpio. Uh, and, I encourage everyone to go to his website. He's got so much to offer. We weren't able to talk about everything. Um, he's got eBooks. He's got a, a service called um, Elm, E-L-M, to help with emotional healing on his website. He's got an eBook e on um, an alternative to uh, Botox, which I think is great. And an eBook on, e on like nail polish. Like, so he's a resource. It's docgonzalez.com. And his YouTube is at heal thyself underscore Dr. G. But I'm sure if you just search for Dr. G, you're going to find him. Thank you so much, sir. I've enjoyed this conversation. I'd love to have you back and talk about appeal. <laughs> well, oh, man. let me do my research. Give me a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay. And if you need any astro advice, sir, I'm your man. I will help you. I'm an expert of Leo's. I speak fluent Leo. <laughs> I love that. Leo, Leo, Leo's want to be heard all the time, as you know.
They do. Uh, you, you, have a, you always have a spotlight here, sir. We'd love to have you back. I love that. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. See you next time, sir. Be well. Enjoy the eclipse. We'll talk about right. that. You too. Good night, Take Dr. Care. G. Okay. Bye. Ciao, ciao. All righty. That was fantastic. Uh, he's a busy man. I mean, an hour of a doctor's time. We all know that's expensive. <laughs> so I'm very grateful for him showing up tonight. It was a great conversation and great information. We'll have to put in the comments that, I mean, I'll play back because I couldn't take notes while I'm doing this, but whatever that organization is for finding stuff, amazing. Um, I'll have to go myself and just start checking products and services and um, <clears throat> find the ones that are healthy. Because I think at this point, it's like a full-time career now for us to be healthy. You know, I, who knows the why? The why doesn't matter. The truth of the matter is, especially in the United States, food, products, everything has become polluted and We've got to take our power back and, and your power is your dollar. You know, if everyone starts buying things in a certain direction, these other companies who are cutting corners with chemicals are going to start to fall or have to change their, their products. So I think it's up to us, you know, uh, to make it a habit, make it culture, make it popular, make it cool, make it sexy when you're on a date that it's all organic food. And even with me and his fiber thing, like when I have food, it's like 75% vegetables, 25% protein is usually the way that I do with some sugar somewhere for sure. <laughs> All right, folks, um, winding down here. It's been a fun time. I want to first put out there, Unite the Light. Unite, Unite the Light is happening on May 18th and May 19th. Um, I keep hitting this up. We only have a few VIP tickets left. Uh, get your tickets now. We'd love to have you with us. We're going to be hanging out on Saturday and Sunday of May 18th and 19th. The astrology is off the hook. I've picked the most astrologically cool um, dates that I could find in the month of May. It's after this eclipse. Uh, I will be hanging out and doing selfies. We're going to boogie. We have a DJ. We have entertainment. We have great food. If you want to buy the up meal upgrade and come to our Saturday night uh, enchanted dinner, it's going to be a great uh, opportunity. This is the first Lightworker Summit I've ever, ever heard of. It's for influencers and people who want to make the world a better place. You don't want to miss it. If you have any heartfelt desire, uh, and by the way, there's other people going too. Devin Doer will be there. Scott um, Scott Cruz, psychic medium, has been on here a few times, is going to be here too, my soul brother. Chris Reck from Middle Pond Tarot is going to be there. People from my staff, Kristen Ryder. Devin Dewar, Robbie Hunt, um, and I'm still waiting for a couple other affirmations. Uh, it's going to be great. So you're going to see a whole bunch of uh, influencer and spiritual stars. UniteTheLight.love. Purchase your tickets sooner than later. Don't miss out. You don't want to miss it. And Austin, Texas, the weather's going to be beautiful, I promise you. And Austin's a cool city if you haven't spent any time there. Also, you may want some day-to-day -day help. Serious joy. We have created a spiritual service that walks in the light with you every day. We have several messages to your phone sent a day. We have a daily pep talk from yours truly. I have weekend coverage. We have daily angel messages from an angel reader. We have daily sound healings and meditations with Kristen Ryder. We have lunar ceremonies with Joe Zamet. Um, and we have an astrological calendar. We have everything. We're a one-stop shop of spirituality. If you just show up and listen to the pep talk every day, your life will change. I have so many subscribers who will, who will testify to that. And it's just $3.99 to start. Also, we have special shows. Last week, we had a special Past Lives and Karma town hall meeting where we answered questions from people's charts. It was myself, Robbie Hunt, and Devin Dewar. And we had a town hall meeting with our subscribers where you could come on, ask questions. We're going to start making town hall meetings a regular thing. We're also going to start making orientation a regular thing. I don't know any astrology app that brings all the subscribers together in a Zoom meeting. Do you? Name the astrology app that does that. We're the only app I know that brings all their viewers together on camera to talk and meet one another. Uh, that's now live. Just click on Soul Support off the main menu. This week, we have an, a new updated version of Kristen Ryder's show. It's now called Keeping It Surreal with Kristen Ryder. It used to be Keeping It Real. Now it's Keeping It Surreal. And this week's topic is going to be really the um, aftermath of the solar eclipse. So we're talking about surreal experiences people have had with eclipses in the past. We have three subscribers coming on to talk about their surreal eclipse experiences. And maybe someone will have something to talk about from this eclipse as one of the most powerful ones we've ever had. That goes live on April 9th at 1 p.m. Streaming exclusively to SeriousJoy.com. 
give it a try. You won't be disappointed. You know, you can invest just 20 bucks a month in yourself and change your life. I don't think anything is more affordable than we are. Sharing is caring. The most kind thing you can do for us is to share us with your friends and family. Tell, share the horoscopes that come out on Tuesdays. Share one of the shorts where I give some little juices of wisdom. Share us on Instagram. Share us on Facebook. Share us to the people you love. If you care, share. That's the best way to spread the love. People do like to donate. You may donate at paypal.me forward slash sensei Christopher. We have a Facebook club called seriousjoy.club. It's also a, a Chiron a study group as well where we allow all light workers and influencers to advertise. If you're someone shady who's like getting people in a, D in a DM and trying to offer them a reading, we will kick you off the platform. We are we have volunteers worldwide who are constantly keeping the shady out of the club. It's a safe place to be yourself. It's a closed club. So anything you post on there will not be anywhere else on the on Facebook. You have to be a member to see it. And we vet every membership to not be a troll. If you want to follow me on all my social media, I'm at seriousjoy.social. So there's a link tree there. You can go and, and find out all the different places I happen to be posting every day. Also, Namaste Today does have an audio version of our podcast. If you'd rather listen instead of watch, you'll find us on Spotify, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. I want to say special thanks to our producer, Noel Way. Special thanks to our casting director, Mara Moon. Our director, Sarah Lyman. My entire teaching staff which is Gwen English, Heather Exposito, Robbie Hunt, Kristen Ryder, Devin Doerr, Joe Zamet, and Daiki Okamoto. And also special thanks to our super friends, Sydney. I hope you're having a good vacation. Princess Coffee Bean, Jill Luis, always one of our heartfelt favorites, Margo Malia, Lori Ship, Nikki Anderson, Libran Lauren, Experimental Elemental, Erica, Michelle's Camper, and Michelle's Bell, Cat Ryder, my soul brother, Daryl Blankenship, Neptune Girl, Jamar, Christine Kelly, and always Iggy and lately Nitu, who I understand will be at the event. I look forward to meeting you, Nitu. All right, folks, it's going to be a great time in this eclipse. Just keep it easy, eat some vegetables, drink plenty of water, and I'll be back on Friday with more. While you're out there surfing the world, I'll be in the studio here covering your astro. I love you. Live, love, be. It's serious joy, joy, joy.